Jay Crawford, Adam the Bull, Garrett Bush, and so many big names, it would take me hours to say all of their names. The ultimate Cleveland sports show. Booyah! Hey, everybody! I don't know what that... Right before we were talking about the fact that that uh, Urban Meyer <laughs> looked at Tim Tebow and Joe Burrow and said, Tim Tebow, starter. Joe Burrow, nah. <laughs> I call can, Urban. Way to go. I cannot believe he did what not play a little. We didn't even play Listen, off starting the game. We wait didn't play off starting the show like that. Wait a minute. It is what it is. <laughs> no, because it's... Although it's, Tim Tebow won him a national title. It's so. justified. The, the Joe Burrow thing, it was justifiable to go with Dwayne. If you go off of that season that Dwayne had one year at Ohio State. Right. Dwayne threw 50 touchdowns in that season. Joe Burrow didn't. Like, what think, are you talking about? Do you think about? Burrow would have not have been... We're going to move off this very quickly, but do you think Burrow... If he had played at Ohio State, it would have been just as good, or did he have to go to OL- LSU to, to get reach that level? What do you guys think? I, I uh, think he had to go I to LSU. I think he would have been just as good because oh, I think Ryan Day is a great play caller, and he's, a, he's slinging the ball. And Joe Burrow, if you knew Joe Burrow in high school, he was yeah. – the man almost scored 100 points in a high school <laughs> um, game. So Right. So uh, that's like what he, he just wanted. came out of nowhere. Yeah. I mean, it, Joe, what do you say? You think he had to go to LSU? Uh, of course. Now, let me tell you this. I tell just you go play Madden real quick. Yeah, and realize that Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase was on his team. That's true. And they yeah, I, have better talent. You, that's there's true. no <laughs> that's better. True. Like, that's as crazy. Good as, as good as Ohio State's receivers have been and continue to be, they never had a pair quite that good. That's crazy Close, good. But not quite yeah. that good. Maybe, yeah, maybe this year. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. All right, folks. Uh, hope everybody's having a great day. We got a ton to get into today. We've got, uh, we're playing a new game. What's it called again? Uh, truth uh, the Truth Serum. Truth Serum. serum. I couldn't uh, think of the name of it. It could be a hit, and it could suck. I'm not quite sure. Most which of these new games yet, that Mike's made up, but I think this one could be a banger. Yeah, this, could. most of them have been good. I think you got a pretty high hit rate on these new games. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling optimistic yeah. about it. Yeah, but we'll see. G. Bush is back from being sick. Yes, man, I'm, I'm I'm back. I come back uh, for for my little sinus or respiratory issues. Yeah, and, and and I come outside this South South Central California outside. What's up with oh all this? Oh my God, Stay, folks, no joke. Don't you shouldn't you really should be outside as little as possible, especially if you have asthma, older people, young kids, nothing outside today. Honestly, we should cancel our little league games. I know we probably won't, but which is it's really unhealthy out there. Uh, I mean, it's very the air quality is awful. Trash. Those wildfires in Canada, which most of us are not paying attention to. I honestly thought they were done because we heard about it like in New York like yeah. weeks ago. It's just awful. It's very it's smoky. So it's still going. I guess so. I oh, guess so. Wildfires is uh, hard to put out, man. It's, it's Especially bad. when it's dry. It's bad weather out there. It's it's really dangerous. In fact, I, well, <clears> anyway, <throat> it doesn't matter. But just uh, especially if you're old or young or or have asthma, don't mess around out there today. Uh, obviously, we're going to get to uh, what else? How are we going to get to? Oh, Mike Pereira <laughs> is going to join us later in the show to talk about the USFL <laughs> championship. And we always got some Browns uh, stuff to talk about up our sleeve. And we, some Mike? outlandish Cavs rumors, oh, including was, one that oh, just yeah, broke yeah, this yeah. morning and about right. possibly trading Darius Garland. We'll dissect that as well, if that is actually real, completely unrealistic, and if so, what's yeah. his value? So we're going to dive into all that. Right. Coming but up. first, we got, we've got to talk about the Guardians, not only the game last night, but Terry Francona ending up in the hospital. We'll get to that, but Mike's got something to tell us first. Yeah, first, we got to let you guys know that our two winners of the ticket giveaways to the USFL Championship game on Saturday were unable to actually attend the game Saturday. So we're going to give out four four packs of tickets this week. And please only reply if you can actually go to the game on Saturday. Please. What kind of knucklehead were No, I, th- win I think a prize? they thought they could go. One of them said he thought he was open, but his uh, wife had made plans and he wasn't aware. So mistakes happen. We get it. But I'm please only people. enter. Cool. If you can actually go on Saturday, so we're gonna I'm, give out. I'm guessing they have a great marriage if there's no communication about plans. I have no. I don't want to speculate on no that. Offense, you I'm never know if something could happen. <laughs> that might have been me. Show it's at work. Yeah, it's, but we got 16 tickets. tickets, tickets today. Calendar. Go 16. Ahead. Tyvis, give me a word, please. A word. Any word. Pick yeah. a word. Um, Buckeyes. The seventh person oh. to put Buckeyes in the chat right now will win our first family four pack of tickets to the USFL championship game. This Saturday night in Canton at 8 o'clock. 
the seventh person to put Buckeyes. Anthony is watching the chat. You got to be able to go, and speak. you got to have Ticketmaster, right? You have to have Ticketmaster, and you have to be able to go. Please do not write Buckeyes in the chat if you cannot attend the game right. on Saturday. As soon as we see Anthony, as soon as Anthony starts seeing Buckeyes, he will flag it down and let us know. And if you do see it, email us. We will tell you how to pick up your tickets and how to get those tickets. So Anthony's on the lookout. I see some Buckeyes coming in. But, Bull, with that, let's talk about Terry Francona. So yesterday, right before the game, uh, Terry Francona actually was in the pregame, spoke, and then he, he, he pulled uh, DeMarlo Hale, um, one of his coaches, obviously, into, the, into his office and told him he didn't feel well. He went over to the Cleveland Clinic. We are very lucky in this city to have both Cleveland Clinic and UH – two of the best hospitals on the entire face of the earth. Um, and Terry Francona, unfortunately, you know, listen, he's not a young guy. He's in his mid-60s. He has spent a ton of time uh, at the hospital recent years. I mean, he's missed a lot of time, guys, in the last four or five years with yeah. a variety of health issues. Now, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with him now. Apparently, we'll get an update. But he's missed a ton of games, especially the COVID season, the year after that. He's had all kinds of surgeries. He's had health issues. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I thought there was a chance he was going to retire at the end of last year when his contract was up and a couple of years ago. Remember, he missed the end of the season. Mm -hmm. So we wish him the best. But uh, um, it, I mean, once once you're in your 60s, and you have all these kind of health problems. You never know. Yeah. I, I want you know, like he listen. I've been critical of Francona this year. I don't think he's done a particularly great job in comparison. Uh, but I'm not one of those. I, I certainly don't want to fire him. And but, I, I mean, you see that. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of different things on the list, and this is just some of it. But uh, at some point you wonder – I mean, I don't, I don't know what he'd do without baseball teams like his whole life. Yeah. But uh, you wonder if he's going to consider hanging it up soon. Because, <coughs> again, this might be nothing. Maybe he's just got a, yeah, maybe. a sinus infection. Maybe, maybe it's nothing with nothing. He's just extra cautious now. But he's had so many issues, you wonder how much longer he can do this. You, you know, that, that was what I was getting at, Bull, <clears throat> as I cleared my throat. Let me clear my, my throat. Na, 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 na. Oh! <laughs> 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 hey, but uh, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> nah. <laughs> This is, it's been like this all morning. I don't know what it's these two right here been in rare form. Can it's all morning. You feel the love. Chill out. Tonight. Chill. Don't have an attack board Chill. Oh. And don't put it on tag. Hey, it's, they, it's gonna be out of context. <laughs> if they put something up there, don't. It, it's not what it looked like at all. It's it's bad. It's not. Hey man. Oh. Yo, let me put the disclaimer out there now. now it's look, not he, what it looks he, like. He's doing a lot of talking. I'm just <laughs> saying, it's not what it bro. looks like. A lot of explaining. Oh my God. Uh, like, you know, I told her, like, here's the thing about, about Tito. Are the Guardians wasting great years? Like, think about this. Like, you, I remember the days of Eric Wedge, Manny Actor. Mm. Like, you got a guy right now who is a Hall of Fame coach. He gets the most out of his players. <laughs> and sometimes I look at it and say, listen, you guys are are, 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 you, are you really maximizing this dude's time with your organization? Because right now, you know, like you said, anytime you get in your 60s and we hope everything is fine, maybe it's just something minor. But anytime you get in, up in age, small things become big things, right? Certainly can, and so yeah. for me, I'm, I'm saying to myself like, hey, are the Guardians realizing that one day he's not going to be on the bench no more? Like sometimes I think they operate under this false sense of security where they feel like, oh man, Tito will be here all the time. Like Tito, like it, you can do certain things with Tito that you can't do with other people. Like if you if you draft a kid and you borderline on him, you you think Tito's gonna be able be able to you know play the Jedi mind tricks yeah. and get him to play the best he can play. Yeah, that doesn't happen with everybody. Look around the league, bro. Like. I remember when they didn't have those, this type of coach on the, on the bench, and sometimes I wonder, it, will they look back at it and say, we should have done more to, to get a better roster, to give him a better chance to actually win a, win a World Series? I don't know. I think I, I would be in that too. I mean, this you want this man to ride out on top. I mean, obviously, like you said, he's a Hall of Famer for what he's done, and it's been seasons we've come in and it was like, there's absolutely no way that the Guardians is going to do anything this Last year. Last year. And somehow, some way, he's able to get it done. I think, G. Right, you got to find a way to 
put some some talent around him so he can truly maximize his his potential as being um, the coach of this team. Um, but as far as the health concerns go, I, I'm praying that it's something minor and it's something that, you know, when you get older, since he's had the past, he wants to make sure that he's on top of things because you don't want the thing to expedite. So I'm praying that that's what it is. But when you do hear it, it's like, when you think about all the time that he's missed, I mean, yeah. it was like a couple of seasons ago, he was like out for like two or three months, it seemed yeah. like. So mm-hmm. when you yeah, think, I thought that was going to be it then. Yeah, that's told. what I, everybody was like, oh, yeah, he's probably done. Yeah. And he but keeps he loves it. I mean, he, yeah. it's, he, I just can't imagine him doing anything else. You know how like you hear about these old couples that like Travel. the husband dies or the wife dies and then you're like, oh, you know, the other one's going to die oh, like, yeah. right yeah. away. Like, I feel like that's Frank Cohen <clears> in baseball. It's like. He's got to manage. Like, I don't know what else he has in his life. He has his little scooter. Have you, ever, have you guys seen him on a scooter? Yeah, they robbed yeah, him for it. Right, they robbed yeah, the yeah. scooter. That's right. <laughs> they, when we went to, when I took the kids to the baseball game uh, a couple weeks ago, <clears throat> when we were leaving the stadium, because we left, because we stayed for the fireworks after. Mm-hmm. So by the time we left, the players were, had already been going. And we saw Frank Cohen drive right by us on his little scooter. <laughs> it was so funny. I mean, like yeah. 65 years old driving around downtown on a scooter. <laughs> But uh, listen, obviously, we all hope he's okay. It's funny, your sentiments, G, it's almost like that's how we talk about Miles Garrett and Nick Chubb. Are we wasting their prime? Right. <laughs> We're talking about <laughs> kind of the same thing with a, an old manager. You know, I've been, I ranted and raved about the, the Guardians a couple of days this week, so I'm not going to go down that road again. You know, we, everybody knows at this point what they got to do. Uh, they did win last night. It was, a, it was kind of a weird game, but. Uh, Hopefully he's going to be okay, and they, they do need him back there because even with some of, you know with with some of the mistakes he's made this year, I think on the field he's made. But what he does so well, as you said, you call it the Jedi mind trick. <laughs> like he is a great motivator. He's really excellent with young players, which he wasn't earlier earlier in his career. Um, he just knows how to relate. It, it's it's weird because usually people that are sixty five, you, you don't think they right. can relate to twenty year olds. Yeah. But he does. I mean, he does that as well as anybody. That's what makes him a special manager. By the way, how about this? So he's managed 21 years in the major leagues between Philadelphia, Boston, and Cleveland. His first four years in Philadelphia had a losing record every year. They were bad. In his 17 years managing in the American League over, what, a, I think 18, it was one year in between Boston and Cleveland. So in the last 18 seasons, including this year, he's been a manager for 17 of those 18 seasons. The worst record he has had, over almost two decades. The worst record in the, since coming to the American League was a few years ago with the Guardians when they, they finished 80 and 82. That was the worst record, 80 and 82. He's been over 500 16 out of 17 seasons. Well, 15 out of 16 because this year's still let, up, let, up, let, up in the air. Let me see if this is if this is correct. Yeah. I wasn't on I wasn't on air at the time that, that I could voice my opinion about yeah. this. Let me get this correct. They did was it did the media and people get mad at him for drinking beer with his players? You mean when it ended in Boston? Yeah. I don't know. I can't remember the exact reason. There was a there was a sense that he had lost his control of the locker room. Because he drank I don't beer? know that it was specific with beer. Right. Let me tell you something. That happens in every baseball locker room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it should. It should continue in every <laughs> locker room. By the way, when I first started <laughs> <And a> lot. <laughs> when I first started working for the Batavia Muck Dogs in the minor leagues, okay? So I, I was the play-by-play guy, but we only did the road games on the radio because my the dopey GM of the team thought, well, if we do the home games, nobody's going to go to the game, <laughs> which is stupid, but okay, whatever. So for the home games, I was in charge of like, you know, media. Not that there was, we had like one reporter that, that right. came there and I was in charge of like statistics and I did some on-field promotion. I did everything. But one of my jobs was I had, at the end of every game, I had to bring two cases of beer down to the coaches. That was part of my job at the end of the game. That's it. Two cases of beer, <laughs> and and those guys would sit. Greg Leg, uh, Frank Klebe, and Ken Westray. Shout out to those guys. I don't even know if they're all still alive, but I hope they are. Uh, Greg Leg actually played in the majors, uh, and uh, they would just drown two cases, and then they'd go out after that. But they would be, be knocking down two cases. Do they, do they, that's do they, a ba- a baseball locker room. I don't know about other locker rooms. I was going to ask baseball. Them. That's it. They're always drinking beers in there. Do they Every, do that in the NFL locker rooms? Do you, you drink, crack they, beers? They ain't drinking no beer. They drinking other things. They got yeah. Hennessy, right? They got all that. Yeah. 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 They, so they stay with the bottles afterwards. Yeah. You get the bottles and they roll out. Yeah. Is they on chill? 
No, they chill for a little bit, but a lot of people, depending after the game, yeah. you might, you know, have a little celebratory drink, but you, you, they clear pretty fast. Oh, because sure. you know the media is coming. So they clear it up. And get, there you go. Hey, hey listen, Dequell Jackson, we still waiting on you. If I get thirsty though, <laughs> and by the way, we, I'm just, ain't we supposed to eat that cereal? We supposed to eat that? Probably pretty damn stale at this point. No, nah, we're supposed to eat that. Uh, some, well, at least you, know, you better put know. some water on it. Yeah, I think <laughs> there was cinnamon toast crunch too. Yeah. I'll get done. Chill, anyway, bro. on the field, by the way, Gavin Williams making his second start was sen- sensational against the Royals, who obviously are not a very good lineup, but he, you know, he gave him four runs to a bad A's lineup. Uh, seven innings, one hit, one walk, no runs, six strikeouts. He was great. Unfortunately, they didn't score until after he left the game, and so he doesn't oh, get the win. Gosh. Now, wins, I've said a million times, I don't really care about the win statistic. Because it's not indicative of how, like you look at this guy, Framber Valdez of the Astros, right? His record's seven and six. <laughs> He's one of the five best pitchers in the American League. His record seven and six. It's a, that's irrelevant. But they should change the rule anyway. Trevor Steffen, who pitched one inning and gave up a run on the worst draw I've ever seen, which we'll show you in a second, <laughs> he gets the win for the game, which is so dumb because they took the lead with him on the mound and Class A closed it out. Let's let's show you this play. Do we have it? You want the Naylor one or let's, the Trevor well, Steffen first, let's play? See, so. All right, let's just set it up. So the so Gavin Williams played. Don't don't play it yet. So Gavin <laughs> Williams pitched a great game. Mentioned that seven innings. In the bottom of the eighth, they replaced him. By the way, he had only thrown like 91, 92 pitches. He could have gone one more inning because he's a young pitcher. They didn't. I would like to see him pitch in the eighth, but I understand why they took him out. I get it. I'm not being critical. Um, so Trevor Steffen comes in to pitch the bottom of the eighth. It's a zero zero game. The Guardians. We're doing nothing offensively. They had two chances to score. And guess what happened early in the game? Both times the Guardians had chances to score. Both times, Miles Straw grounded into a double play. Oh, my God. Counted for four outs and two at-bats. So, bottom of the eighth, we are – it's a 0-0 game. The Royals had a runner on third and I think one out. I can't remember how many outs there were at the time. I think it was one out. And then this play happened if you missed it. I, 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 I couldn't believe it. Here we go. Brown ball back to Stefan. And wow. oh, where does that throw go? Wow. That's a little hard to see. But I, I was like, wow. Did somebody pay him to throw away the game? Because that was the the way he obviously just misgripped it or something. But that it's was one of the, the worst, worst throws that I've ever seen. Like pitchers, like pitchers when they're not pitching the ball have terrible accuracy oh my God, sometimes. That, but that is all time bad. Look, like this is this is horrible. I mean, he was gonna be out by, <laughs> he was gonna be easy out. How many outs were there? Were there was there one out? One, one out. out. Yeah, there was one out. I thought it was. Man, that was okay. Yeah. So that was terrible. So they score one, one nothing. Now the Royals were trying to get a runner in scoring position. Point shade. To yeah, <laughs> to increase their lead, and then Allegedly. Bo Naylor. Look at this play by Bo Naylor behind the plate. Went from an all-time bad play to uh, an all-time good play. Look, look at this, this pirouette right here. Let's see Bo Naylor. Take board full. Oh, oh, look. Aha, pirouette. Gotcha. Ha, you're dead. Okay. By the way, something I didn't even think about. <laughs> so, psych. Bo Naylor, that was supposed to be a pitch out. And Trevor Steffen just threw the, Trevor Steffen screwed up again. <laughs> now, that's yeah. an incredible play by Bo Naylor. An incredible play. Yeah, that's crazy. To be able to di- almost dive to get that pitch, spin around. I mean, pirouette, as you said. Yeah. And you got to make a perfect throw. Actually, he should throw every ball like this. <laughs> Look at that. He should do that pirouette every time he gets I mean, that's the That's amazing. That's a, right. That would be awesome. A strike. He that is a bullet throw. That. that was on the buddy. That, that you was, know, that that's fire. crazy because that was like one of his his uh, criticisms. Was, right. Yeah. Coming good, in, he could throw out throw somebody Mike out. Mike Zanino wouldn't have made that play. Mike Zanino would have felt fallen on his ass. <laughs> <and make that laughs> no, I wonder, I wonder, no, the ball would have went past yeah, it. Probably. You know, I wonder, I wonder what he's doing right now. He probably had a diner. Collecting his oh, money. Yeah. He had a diner, he's eating some, breakfast, he, eating lunch. He's somewhere eating Smoking chicken wings. Eating chicken wings, counting his money. Knee on his ice. <laughs> well, I, I just said knee on his ice. I said knee on his ice, Mike. Did you get that? I said knee on his. He's, he's cra- got knee on his ice. It was it was crazy that Gavin Williams had the the game that we, ah, me and G. Yeah, you was absurd with yours. My twelve strikeouts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absurd. Well, you yeah. got G me said and he gave him three runs. I mean, well, you, you were right that? the first time. <laughs> yeah, sure. I got that. Okay, well, ball. I guess I was the you closest. You are the realistic guy. Like, yeah, you know. Yes. I mean, and, and this is crazy though. It's hard for me to tell like who's good. Like pitching, I, I have to watch the game and see because now 
all of the records and the guys I grew up watching, those records are unattainable. Right. Yeah, These guys true. will never get wins. Like they, like I, I used Nobody's to. Nobody's gonna ever win 300 games. Again. I, never I used to look happen. at complete games, right. wins, strikeouts, ERA, and then I get up. I grow. I'm 40. I get up. Bulls like none of those count anymore. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean they don't count no more? Wait, Pitchers be pitching I mean, five. ERA and, still counts, but pitch, the rest don't. <laughs> the rest is like, yeah. I mean, how could you ever contend for like, like the the wins if you like got five? They get they pitch you five innings. Yeah, right, right. Bull. But, yeah. Right, if you had to pick one career for the to follow for the rest of their career, yeah. I guess in baseball, who you taking, Ga- Gavin or Bybee? I think Gavin Williams is is the better of the two. He throws harder. He's a bigger guy. I think they're both gonna be very good though. So if you who who you bet? I would take Gavin Williams. If okay. I had to bet on one what of them, about, I'd bet on him. What but about I, you, G? But it's like it's like I think Gavin Williams is a ten and Bybee is a nine and a half. I mean, I I, I think don't, they're both excellent. Don't hate me for this. Don't yeah. ha- don't do not Logan hate, Allen. Yeah. Do not hate me for this. And thank you, you say you. Peyton Battlefield, I'll fight you. Jay. Yeah, look, he, listen, you. So you brought all three of Zach them. Zach Yeah, there. <laughs> I've he say that I, I laugh. I he is not I, I, G's gonna say Espino. I know where he's going. Nah, nah. I ain't gonna say. Uh, what I am gonna say is I'm, I'm, I'm gonna uh, protract and, and give you the futures of this. I don't. I'm scared. <laughs> I don't like. I do not like the fact that they all the same age and all of them is up here, because all I can help to think of is like, man, I'm, I'll be excited now. Before I'm, I'm not trying to see. I'm not trying to see Stefan and, and Please Sack and. And, and so I'm not trying to see these dudes. I don't. I don't care about them. Yeah. I'm only trying to see the young pitchers because they got more upside and they throw the ball harder. That's very true. They, so I don't yeah. care about. Yeah, none I of mean, them starts. Very I true. I mean, in, in a perfect world, like <laughs> next year, their rotation could be McKenzie, Gavin Williams, Bybee, Allen, and, and then maybe Quantrill is your fifth guy. You know, like so. And they're all going to be controllable for at least five more years. So my thing is, I get a little scared because I already heard in my head. Well, guys, you know, um, you know, the thing about who we are in our market and the way we're built is, you know, it's going to be unrealistic to ki- be able to give all three of these young guys right. contracts. So, but, but we're going to, ha- I don't like that. But here's the thing they're going to be spending, once they trade Bieber, they're going to be spending no money on pitching. Yes. I mean, think about that. Yeah. All these young guys are making the minimum salary. Well, well, how, how long until McKenzie has a contract? McKenzie, he might never get no big money. <laughs> he's too, he too old. I, I, he keeps getting, he hurt. Keep getting hurt. <laughs> McKenzie's not gonna like a free agent. He's got five more years. That's really? Crazy. So he I get no money. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, he threw. these other guys aren't gonna be he free threw. agents forever. <laughs> he's, he's so he's you're spending done. no money on your rotation. Right, nothing except for Bieber, and he's going to be gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're spending no money in the bullpen. So you said, making significant So what you're saying there. is we're going to get some big bats so it's, after this. This offseason, they have to spend money on the bats okay. because they are spending. Who's the hitting zilch coach? On pitching. Who's the hitting coach? Uh, Friend of the program, we will not disparage. I coach can't even think of his name. I can't even think of Chris who it is. Chris Oh, Baleka, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just asking a question. I, 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 the money should. They thank you for putting it there. Because yeah. see, I like I like putting it out in in the media first before we start getting these talking points. Yeah. You're not th- these young dudes. If they make the roster, everybody is making pennies on the dollar. Yeah, you can go get me. You, you already got you. You locked in Jimenez on a friendly deal, low key. You got Ramirez on a friendly deal, on a beyond low, friendly, beyond deal. friendly. Yeah, who you really paying? They got to pay. Those are the only two guys they're paying. Uh, Josh Naylor, make, you know, per year is making good money. Well, Josh Bell's making good money. Josh Bell is. But that's only an two, issue. You know, they're going to get stuck with that contract. But immediately, immediately, the Guardian should immediately move Miles Straw to the bench. I would cut him. I would just move on. Why are you? Okay, DeQuayle. But, but they're not going to do that. <laughs> he's, so, never gonna, he's never going to. You know, I wouldn't cut him. Here's what I would okay, do. Okay, okay. I would force... Uh, when I make other trades, when I trade Bieber, I would force the other team to take either Miles Straw or Josh Bell's contract. I like that. One or the other. And I'll take less in return to get rid of one of those contracts. Bell's making more money per year, but they owe after this he's year. He's been hitting well lately. Yeah, he's not. He's not any good. He's, but I, <laughs> but Miles Straw is guaranteed. Nineteen million over the next three years. See, oh, from who? From the Guardians. That, that's Guaranteed, a bad, that's a and that's not song. including this year where they still owed another about two that's million. A, that's a bad. Song. He's still got about twenty-one million guaranteed, including the rest of this season. They, they should try to get rid of his contract. Man. And if you trade Bieber, some team would take him if they had to to get to give up less in a trade. Especially if you traded Bieber to like a big market team. 
And they're like, all right, well, we'll take straws, not make like because 19 million over three years for a big market team is nothing for the Guardians. It's a big deal. So straw should immediately at the very least be on the bench. Move Steven Kwan to center field and call up Oscar Gonzalez today. How is he doing? He's playing much better at AAA. Okay. And even if he wasn't, who cares? <laughs> Miles Straw can't hit. Quan's got no power. Rosario's got no power. They're getting at this point, again, he's only played a week. I'm not condemning him, but they're getting no production out of catcher. Josh Bell has been a little, little better, but still not very good. So you're not getting enough production. At least Oscar Gonzalez has potential and certainly and, power. And you call him up today. And how, and how much, see, because I, I, I want to piggyback your trade. Yeah. And I want to get something. Does Espino even have value? Not right now, because he's had too many injuries. See, and he's your number one. Yeah, I'm willing if you to want him the, too. You want the Guardians? Uh, I shouldn't say he has no value, but his value is way down. They won't trade him right now. If, Go ahead, Mike. What's up? We just can't talk about the Guardians, especially with how they won the game last night, without giving my personal best friend, my choice for 2024 president, Will Brennan. Some love and credit. Stay tag board. Can we you stop guys see putting celebrities swing? as president? Did you guys see that? This is the most picturesque <laughs> yeah. game winning double swing of the last 24 hours in the history of the world. <laughs> All right. You've never seen a better looking he did a great job. Yard double swing. <laughs> it was a clutch hit, especially with straw on deck. Big time clutch hit. <laughs> and it's a good pitcher. Scott Barlow, their coach, is a good bull. player. I hate you. That's a quality, quality at bat. Nice job. They needed, you know, you can't afford to lose that game to the Royals when Gavin Williams pitched great. So you get the win against the crappy team. It's a good clutch hit by him. Nice job. And Classe, who had some struggles early in the season, has locked it in. He's back. He, what has he got, like 25 saves? 25 saves, and he is absolutely, unquestionably, without any doubt of certainty. That made no sense. But he is the guaranteed lock to make the all-star team. From the right, guard. right, right. And, and he's, by the way, extremely underpaid, which is good. And he's locked up for five years and they're paying him nothing. Why you? Uh, <laughs> why did you have to take the shot at Miles Straw? Because he's horrible. <laughs> if you think this what shot is the is record for saves Strong? in a season, I can't remember. Is it single 58? season saves record? Give me one sec. Pool because is, he's on pace for over fifty saves this year. Pool is unbelievable. It is sixty-two. <laughs> Francisco yeah. Rodriguez. Remember K Rod with of the course. Los Angeles Angels in yeah. two thousand eight. Wow, player why player with more than 60, 60 saves in a season. Tri uh, Trevor Hoffman. I, didn't, I, I thought he had a record for Who's a while. Who's like the top five or six guys? You have it there? I do. Go How ahead. about Edwin Diaz <laughs> in 2018 had 57. For the Mariners. As did Bobby Thicken <laughs> in 1990. For the White Eric Sox. Gagne in 2003. You said wow. Kanye. Gagne with the glasses. John Smoltz also had 55. And here's where Trevor Hoffman and Mario Rivera come in. They're both tied for six all time with 53 saves in a season. How Smoltz going to be? Smoltz, Smoltz, how are you going to be great getting? starter and a great Great closer. starter and reliever. That's crazy. It's amazing. That's crazy. Well, a guy who played here wasn't a, a Hall of Fame starter, but Dennis Eckersley was a very good starter with with Cleveland, and then he became obviously one of the all-time closers. I he's, tied, he's tied for 20th in the all-time saves. I only, I only knew Eckersley to be a, a – a, a, that was beyond my time. When yeah, he was when he starter. played for the Indians, he was a, a, Eckersley was a, a close was a pitcher. Yeah. Trivia question for, for Bull. Too. What's that? You're the smartest baseball guy I know. That's not exaggeration. If you get this trivia question, you get to pick the next word for our ticket giveaway. Okay. What a Who great holds prize. the record for single saves in a season – as a lefty. Tyvis Powell. Single season save. Well, all the guys you mentioned are not lefties. John Rocker. So here, let me just. I give, give you the year and I give you the number if you want. No, I'm going to think about it for a minute. I'm going to throw some names out there as possibilities. Mitch Williams. Incorrect. No, no, no. I, you weren't supposed to answer. I'm just throwing out like just talking okay. to myself right now. Um. Willie, Hern Willie, a.k.a. Guillermo Hernandez, could be. Um, John Rocker, I guess. John Rocker I for know. the I don't know if he had. I think he only had about 30. I don't 30 remember him having a for the Braves save year. Um, the, the number, by the way, is 53, just so you know. 53 saves in a season. I feel like there's somebody that's just not hitting me. Uh, what? Uh, give me the year. 93. Hmm. 93. I would not have known this if I did not have the list of active single season save uh, wow. saves record in front of me. You said it's not Mitch Williams? It is not Mitch Williams. Man. 
John Franco. Incorrect. Ah! He said it. He so did it on the Chicago Cubs. Oh, my God. Wow. 93 was call, not Mitch And you Williams. call yourself a Cubs fan. Right? Hold on. Hold Unbelievable. On. He had a 311 ERA. I'm trying to think of their closers. They had 53 saves Rod in 75 Beck. innings. They had Lee Smith. They're both right. If this was an Ohio State question, I would have had it five wow, minutes it's ago. It's just not coming to me. Hold on. Give me the thing about it for a minute. You want the initials? <laughs> no. Randy Myers. Oh, shoot. Bad job out of you, boy. Wow. Can't pick the next Randy word. Myers. I can't so, G. Bush, word. that means you get to pick the next I word. I was stumped. <laughs> what word is the next keyword for a USFL ticket giveaway? Abacus. <laughs> Give us a word that people can spell. <laughs> he gave you a word. You got to spell it. <laughs> gave you abacus, bro. All right. The ninth person to put abacus spelled correctly or incorrectly <laughs> in the chat is going to win our next family four pack of tickets. Abacus. That's the not USFL a hard champion. Word. Champion. What? What? I am Why giving Anthony and Earl red. full reign to decipher whether an abacus counts or not. <laughs> if it is spelt closely Why? enough to count. Why well, stop there? Go super count the so Delicious you guys SBL are fine. A B A C U S. Right, come on, man. <laughs> I mean, in all honesty, Anthony can't spell anything really. So, yeah. Yeah. anywhere. Abacus is what you count on, right? Yeah, yeah, man. Get your stones, man. Yeah, it's, it's with the, the old Abacus. counting system, correct? Abacus. Right. <laughs> so, I see some coming system. in now. Anthony will DM the person with how to pick up those tickets. Mm -hmm. Please, if you are going to. Enter your name, be able to Why? go on Saturday. Why that and word? Out <laughs> out the, Anthony, how is the YouTube chat I doing on spelling this? I was in my head, tying the time machine, bro. Why, did, why not just super calibrate? There's a lot of advocates coming in here, so. That's what you Kudos to you guys. Yeah, Anthony will get down and they let you know. They would have been upset, Anthony. Right. <laughs> it's time to play the game, right? No, we're going to talk a little cast first, then we're going to play the game. <laughs> oh, okay. So, real quick, and yeah. Anthony, you got to stop this. Give me the Sam Amico tweet first. We have two tweets that have come out that we're going to reference back to what happened yesterday, but this morning. Sam Amico tweeted, and you can take it full, Steve, that the Cavs are open to a potential Darius Garland trade. Cut it out. Now, yeah, what does that even mean? Cut that's it a, out. That's a bullshit tweet. Cut so, it out. So, two Come minutes on. later, after this happened, can you give me the Chris Fedor tweet, Anthony, if you, you have it up? Chris Fedor tweeted out, Cavs have not had any discussions about trading all-star point guard Darius Garland and don't intend to move him. Thank Sources you. Sources tell Cleveland.com. Thank okay. you. This that comes real quick. Give me the windy tweet. After Brian Windhorse went on ESPN Radio here in Cleveland, and had this quote, I have some speculation. There's a couple of outlandish stuff that I'm not going to say right now because I'd get in trouble. I wish I could tell you more, and I know I shouldn't tease you. Yeah, you know, I got beef with all these things. I love <laughs> Brian Windhorst is awesome, but that's lame to do that. I hate when people come on a show and, oh, there's some awesome stuff, but I can't tell you. Well, then shut the F up. I agree. Sam Amico's tweet is embarrassing. We shouldn't even have put that up there. It's a bad job out of Mike. That tweet's embarrassing. <laughs> it's blown up on Twitter, so I think yeah, there's anybody, plenty people anybody know Anybody blowing where that up on Twitter is embarrassing from. themselves. Well, it's because, it's because Brian Windhorst yeah, said that's what just, he said. That's, that's, that's just – there's nothing there. Like, Fedor has some stuff to back that up, okay? He's connected to the GM. He's spoken to the GM. Maybe the GM lied you, to him. Are you saying that them moving DG wouldn't be outlandish? Of course it would be so outlandish. So that's why it's blowing up. I know that, but Sam Amico doesn't say anything in that tweet. <laughs> In the in the whole article, I, I just read it. This is the ending paragraph of the article Mikey, you can to read? what Sam Amico is tweeting out. Quote, this is NBA silly season when just about anything could happen. This is also Altman who isn't afraid to shake things up. Cleveland's looking for some size at the wing positions, preferably someone who could shoot. It seems doubtful they would use Garland to find it, but from the sound of things, it's suddenly not impossible. A.K.A. Maybe one team called the Cavs and was like, hey, is Darius no, Garland AKA, available? AKA, let me tell you the truth. AKA, he don't know shit, and he's just talking yes. out his ass. Yes. Okay, that's what happened. Hey, let me ask you another question, though, he man. Wanted, he, you, know how, you know how fans often accuse us or other people of doing things for clicks? I hate to, to, to do that to others. That's exactly what he did there. Hey, look, that's look, exactly putting something out there for clicks. That's hey, look, 100% look, what he did there. Hey, hey, but McNuggets, let me play devil's advocate a little bit right here. Shoot, please. Um... Mm. From a basketball perspective, there are only literally maybe two to three people that are untradeable. Well, I'm not saying he's untradable. I'm saying he's putting Ooh. that tweet out there with no facts. To well, I'm glad, I'm glad you I'm, said I'm just saying, he's I'm, just talking. He's what, just talking. Well, here's what, 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 what the people in devil's advocate yeah. is. If, if well, Darius Garland could be traded. Yeah, if, I, I if they call up and say, Wait. hey, look, we got <laughs> – we, we got. I don't, I, 
I would. Here's what you should do. You should look at Darius Garland, right? And you would. You should go down a list and say, okay, well, in what scenario for a one versus one, one to one, would you consider trading Darius Garland? Right. And if you, you said got, one for one, one for one. And if you and if you get to a point where you get over ten people, then that's not far fetched to say that they not. Go, I, that I wouldn't think G, about. I it. think. Listen to me. I think a smart GM is open-minded on b- almost any player at the right price. Yes. Right? I'm gonna let you you got to be open-minded. Yes. You yeah. got to be willing to listen. What's the harm in listening? I mean, if it's Giannis, you can forget about it. But in outside of him. Um, Unless if, you're trading for Jokic. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do that. But You wouldn't trade Darius Garland for stay behind, Jokic? Stay behind the glass. No, he said Giannis. Stay behind. Oh, yeah. oh what my is, goodness. Yeah, what is wrong with you? Y- now, <laughs> yeah. There's a couple of people, like you said, Giannis. And here's the thing. You're not going to get... And, and so I've been looking at the salary, this little salary cap thing that they've been talking about. And um, I wanted to say the salary cap was mythical in, in the NFL, <laughs> but it's sure not mythical in the NBA. I've done, done some research and um, <laughs> you're going to have about two ball players. That's all you got. You get this year. They can get it off. No, I think next I, year. I about to say after July 1st, when the new CBA come in that the super team thing is that's done. A wrap. It's not happening no more. So that's why you see these good. teams hurrying up making and, these and, trades. And so you got Darius Garland, right? So you got DG. How much is this contract? How much he getting? So he signed a very team friendly rookie. Well, it's the rookie max extension. Okay, which as the salary cap continues to rise looks more and more team-friendly. So, for example, a regular max extensions with Bradley Beal signed last year. Bradley Beal's making, in the next couple of years, 48, 52, 56, Ooh. 57. The max at any one season that Darius Garland will count for against the cap is $44 million. See? So, comparatively speaking, it is very team-friendly. So, you got a young guy, a, a all-star, very team-friendly. That's a very valuable contract. Now, if you think about it, you still got to pay Mobley, right? How many years he got left on that contract? Darius. Four. four Darius years. got four he years. He just signed it. He last just year. signed the rookie just max extension it. last year. Wow. So, so you got to think about it. That's <laughs> worth more to people <laughs> than you know. Like, come on. Like, if, if if you think about that, you're like, wow, that's a that's a very nice deal. Like, you could get you could get somebody back, preferably that might even be better than Darius. Who are you trying well, to? Who are you trying to get? Plus, think about this too. Times before we answer that question, Darius is a guy who you can trade to any team because he doesn't seem like the type of guy that's going to say, "Oh, I want out of here." No. Now he might turn out to be, but at this point, he's not. Doesn't seem like that type of guy. No. So there's yeah. no limit to where you could trade him. So it, that it, makes it even even more. Well, valuable. Dar- Darius is one of those guys that if you trade him, the team is people will be excited for Darius because of how young he is yeah. and how the potential that he has. I mean, he's come into the league. He has a great ball handle. He shows that he can get. Guys like Jared Allen involved offensively. He gets guys involved. He's yeah. the ultimate facilitator, but he can score on his own yeah. as well. So I, it's I, very valuable. I, I agree with you, though. I just don't see who why would they? Him yeah, well, I, I wouldn't. For what? He's he's literally if, if, if the way that we don't know about Donovan Mitchell, if he's going to stay or not, you ultimately about to trade away the only guy that would be worth anything outside of Evan Mobley. Why would you take him and Mobley and split them up and, <laughs> and, and, and then potentially lose out on Donovan Mitchell in, to, in a year or two anyway? To me, to me, I think there there is Garland. I don't know how you feel about this. There is Garland McNuggets. I feel is like just a little bit less nicer than 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 Kyrie Irving. I agree, but. He close as hell. I agree. He close. Well, he don't have I he agree. don't have the wow, but he's forty beyond the three point arc. He's he's getting you more assist than Kyrie gonna give you. He doesn't wow you with the dribbling. He can finish very well. Yeah, His two drop. He but, got a nice handle. But you don't have to worry about all the. Ball, but the he field, has off, none of the <laughs> off court. So why would you get? I don't, that's why I, I'm like I, when they. I, I, if, I would be, if the Cavs trade Darius Garland, I'm done with him. Again, I'm I, done I, with him. If I'm a smart GM, I'm open to listening. To I'm anything, done with him. No, but I can't imagine somebody really would present me with a trade for Garland that I would do. And, that, and but, unless it's unless it's Luka Doncic or something like that. Here's here's one thing that. I was telling Earl this morning, the point guard position in the NBA is as talented across the board as it's ever been. Like, Darius Garland's a really good player. He's an all-star. He was a borderline all-star this year. If you go through the list of point guards, you have a hard time making, like, the guys between, like, 8 and 12, you can tell me anyone's in any spot, and I'd be like, okay, you can make an argument. So you're saying he's between 8 and 12? Uh, you want me to just go through the list of names? Tell yeah, me if they, eight, yeah. Right yeah. now, real quick. Yeah. You know, this is... 
This is how ESPN sorts positions. So, do you consider Luca a point guard? Yes. yes. So, Luca or Garland? Luca. SGA or Garland? He's not a point guard. He's yes, a shooting he guard, I thought. SGA. Uh, Shea Gilgis. He just, he just made first team all NBA. You're, I you're thought he was. Yes. I thought he was. Give me, two. give me Shea. Damian Shea. Lillard. Dame. Dame. But Steph he's Curry. older. I, you, would, you wouldn't trade. But just, 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 no, like just, just, just right now. Right, right. Okay, those guys are better. Yeah. Steph Curry. Steph. Steph. Uh, John Morant. Ja. ja. I wouldn't want him. <laughs> but, just, but just saying, uh, Tyrese Halliburton. <laughs> now give, I, give me I, Garland. That DG. Give me DG. Garland. I give me Garland. Play DG. Okay. Give me Garland. I take. I take. Yeah. Listen, I like Halliburton, but I, I don't yeah. like your name. It DG. sounds like it sounds like Trey, a company. Trey Young. I'm just, I'm just going through names. This is just Trey Young. Yes. Trey Young. <laughs> Trey Young can take over a whole game. I take. I take. I might. Trey just is a defensive liability because he's so small. No. If he if he locked in, I'd take Trey. Trey Young is. But. Trey Young and Garland, that's a that's a nice that hmm. Trey Young. I'm not taking between those two. I like I, I think Trey Young is a horrendous teammate as far as playing with him. Like yeah. I would not I would take Darius Garland, I wouldn't think twice. Uh Jalen Brunson. I'd take that. Brunson. I'd take Darren Brunson. Fox. Give me I, Whew, for, for that's the a Brunson. Good, nah, give me, that's give, a give me Darius Garland over Brunson. Me too. No, uh, I don't I don't know. Darren man. Fox. <laughs> that's a, that's a tough take Garland. one. Over De'Aaron Fox? Fox? That's I a think tough feel like, How many years has De'Aaron Fox been in the league? 70. No, he's, he's just he's going on his fifth year now. See, I feel De, like De'Aaron been, Fox has been good, but he's five years? he's been terrible for Saturday. Like, Tacramento's been terrible, give, so you give, haven't really give me paid Garland. attention. Give me Garland. Jamal Murray. Mm, Murray. <laughs> Drew Holiday. Give me Murray. Drew good defense. Drew, Drew Holiday. Get, get, I'm going to take, take Garland. I think I might take Garland, too. LaMelo Ball. Stop. Garland. Garland. So I just named 15. We had seven that he was definitely better in and six, six that were in the mix. So like I'm yeah, saying, I mean, he's in that – he's not in that top, top tier point guards. He's yeah. in that second tier. And when you're trading for a guy who's not in that top five – and this is not a knock on Garland. The point guard position is as good as it's ever been. The value back for a guy who's not in that top, top tier, you're not going right. to get equal value back for as good as Garland is <coughs> in a trade, in a position where dudes are being drafted – Two, three, four in the draft, one in the draft, come in, make an immediate impact. Right. So, How old is I Darius? I just Darius don't think, Garland? and that's why ultimately make trading him doesn't make any sense. How yeah. I want Darius Garland uh, turned twenty three this year. So when he, when his next contract come up, he'll be, be 27, 27. 28. Yeah. So and out of all of those names you just named, and I'd Darren say, Fox is twenty five. I way. say maybe that like three of them might be retired by then, maybe. Lillard and Curry. Yeah. And so, Kyrie, if he decides to retire early. Basketball players don't be retiring early, dog. No, they but my, to... my point is with Garland, he's more valuable to the Cavs than what I think you'd get back in a trade yes. for him. I yes. Agree. So I, I, I would not trade him what, unless Luka, unless Don, uh, Giannis or Jokic is on the table. Yeah, but none which of those guys not would be on the be, table. So. I'm, not, I'm not trading him. The, uh, the only thing, really, the, the only thing that could be crazy is trading Donovan Mitchell one year after getting him. That's how land. Well, that goes into real quick, Bull. Yep. To go back to the Wendy tweet, Wendy yeah. alluded to some outlandish move the Cavs can make. The question I wanted to ask you guys today before this whole uh, Amico report with Darius Garland came up is, what would be, or what do you consider an outlandish move? And give me an example of something you think could be, quote unquote, outlandish to happen to the Cavs this free. Well, I think period. G said something before the show that I thought was very interesting. Bring it up, G. Little less it. <laughs> My, Miles Bridges. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, so Miles Bridges. I think that might be the outlandish thing. You gotta t when you take a word at the when you look at these prognosticators, right? They try to give you these context clues, right? They do. Outlandish. That's like, yeah. He didn't say blockbuster. He didn't say intriguing. He didn't say like this is a hot take. He said outlandish. Like so. If you look at what Cleveland is at this point, or with a lot of people, a lot of things around, think about it like this. Cleveland is a place where, you know, they got the Deshaun Watson thing. Rehab. They, rehab. They, they, had, rehab. Uh, they had the, the Kareem Hunt thing. Like, they just took, they got Imani Bates. He, you know, now his, that happened two Cleveland years ago. Cleveland is rehab. The, the nat narrative, now for me, I can't say, like, that's, y'all handled by the judicial system. Sometimes y'all blow it out of proportion. It's already been it's, dealt with. It's already been dealt with. Not what he did. Like, so. It was at ugly. The, at this point. But it's been point, dealt with legally. But, but, he still owes some, and, and he, and he suspended for a couple of years, games. 
23. I think he served his full suspension. Okay, he served his full. Because he only played. He didn't play at all this year. He didn't play. Yeah, I think he served his yeah, full suspension. So, so he, he is, if you haven't looked up, you could go look it up for yourself. It was domestic violence. So you want his stats, by the way, G, his last yeah. season he played? Go I ahead. got it right now. 27 and 20.7 boards, four assists. Twice. Two say, that, well, say that one. Twenty point seven boards, four assists for Charlotte. Two he shot years forty nine percent from the floor and thirty three from three. He'd That's be a perfect fit. What's his, what, what, what's his size? I, Paul six. He's six six two. Size 25. matters. And by the way, Mike, he shot forty percent from three in the year before. So what, what you said when he says outlanders, yeah. that's what I think of. I think that, that the Cavs are honestly looking at it. You look at Michael Jordan; he's no longer the owner of the, uh, not the majority owner, um, and ownership is going to come in. They want to put their stamp on the organization. Uh, at the end of the day, I think he may be a guy that they look at and say, "No, nah, we want him off the roster. We're not going to make that move, or we want to move in another direction." And I think he's another person you can get. On the cheap, in terms of trading, figuring it out. Now, if it's a Jared Allen for him, um, that might be a trade that people may say is is what he's talking about. But I, when you say outlandish, That's I think outlandish. of a, a contra- controversial thing like this. So I, I would just, do that trade. <clears throat> I know. Listen, I know. If you trade for Miles Bridges, people, there's going to be some people that can get up in arms because what he did was ugly. Nobody, nobody's defending what he did. It's been dealt with in court. Uh, but if the man is allowed to play. I, we, we've been through this with yeah. Deshaun Watson. And I, he certainly, you know, he certainly, and you can, can get him as G said on the cheap because some teams won't trade for him. You could probably get him on the cheap. They also just drafted Brandon Miller with the second overall pick. Yep, who right. guess what? Plays the exact same position as Miles Bridges. Now you can never have too many wings. The Cavs don't never. have any. Some teams have way too many. You cannot have too many wings. But he is now expendable. I don't think you get him for Allen though. G. They just drafted Mark Williams in the lottery last year who is essentially Jared Allen, just 20 years old and a lot cheaper, so I'm not sure why they would take on Allen. But I do think there are some other fringe pieces. You give them some expiring contracts in a deal to get Bridges back, who would be, theoretically speaking, the perfect schematic fit. And so you're saying that they wouldn't have to give up back. He's a good player that you wouldn't have to give up anything significant to get. Is that what you're saying? If the new new Hornets ownership says, hey, we just don't want to – be associated with right. him, brand new, which is very, it, very plausible. Yeah. It would not be shocking if they're like, "Hey, we're new. We don't want to deal with you. You had your incidents. I know you served your punishment, but we want to move forward." I don't think the return for him, with the baggage he comes with, would be nearly as high as a player of equal talent, skill at that position. Right, would be for my right, opinion. and he's an all-star caliber player. I mean, at least twenty-seven and four at the premium wing position. And, and, yeah. by, and he's by the way, three years old. By the way, McNuggets, he was saw with De- he was seen with Darius Garland, yep. in, a, in photos, He's and, he, and he tweeted Amani Bates as well, congratulating him on going to Cleveland. Yeah, they're both Michigan guys. So I mean, there's That's some right. there's some smoke around it. Like I'll what, land, I'll land this to me as trade. Let, hey, hey, let me know in the chat. We gonna get hey, hey, chat. You tell us, would you be willing to take on some a, a guy like this? Because at the end of the day. What we do for our jobs, we talk about what the heck is going to happen on the it's, court. It's, Here's it's, a trade, it's, guys. This is a trade. We'll trade all six of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> trade all six of those players. <laughs> I, listen, uh, Sam Merrill sounds like a, a real estate agent. <laughs> Dean Wade sounds that's like funny. he has a law firm. <laughs> that's funny. Lamar Stevens, man, that, that sounds like a dude that never made it, that was really good at your high school, that could dunk in 12th grade, like 12 See, years old. I think Sam Merrill sounds like a kid <laughs> That was a bully in elementary school, and then a then a girl punched him in the face, and he never bullied anybody again. <laughs> y'all, y'all are. By the way, y'all are rare for I will. Hey, chat. Let us know if, if Bridges is a guy that you would, would would embrace. No, outland. It's obvious. He said that this this player's name has been in the media. The, the outlandish move is obviously trading. I'm, I don't agree. But it's trading Evan Mobley for Zion Williamson. They're not gonna do whoa. That. <laughs> that, whoa. <laughs> look, look. Like, hold on no, hold on, hold on. That's a new, listen, that Tybus, I'm in. Tybus, you sat on you that one. You do it, you take it. Tybus, you, you sat on that one. Would you take that? I mean, the yo. Pro- the problem is Zion yeah, was if he's healthy. Yeah, that outlandish. That's <laughs> outlandish <laughs> Zion, Thank you for following the assignment. Zion, wow. the pro- Zion is like <laughs> Oh god. You gotta take him in all of his his three only fans, girls, that's going to be at the game. The only fans. I'm down with only fans. I'm all good with only fans. <laughs> Zion is like, oh, wow, is like seeing the greatest meal on the face of the earth, 
but it's behind glass and you can't get to it. Wow. It this because is, the guy, when he's on the court, is just, just unreal. Un, uh, he's unreal. <laughs> but he can't stay on the court, so I don't know if you can trade for it, him. It, McNuggets, they, time is hitting. <laughs> That's crazy. That Ever. is outlandish. I love that. Hey, real quick, back to Miles Bridges. Uh, we got a super chat telling us, and I was just informed. Oh, yeah. He's a restricted free agent. Oh, uh, so, so you want the trade Cavs. For well, I think the most realistic scenario for the Cavs <coughs> to get him then would be a sign and trade. Sign and trade. Yeah. I don't think they'd be able to offer him a mid level exception as an offer sheet and just have Charlotte be like, hey, we're not going to match that because the assets you get back for that are, are more valuable. But he's the restricted free agent. Appreciate uh, who sent us that super chat. I just saw it a second ago. But I appreciate whoever in the chat said that. Uh, Donnie Brody for letting us know. Bridges the restricted free agent, which means the, sh the <laughs> Charlotte Hornets could match. <laughs> right. And could Steve Becker says he's still got to serve 10 games of suspension, but who cares? The regular season is just preseason anyway. Yeah, he's, that, I, he's like you a know what? That Shout out to Brian to. Winhurst because <laughs> when you like when you tease it like that, anything is possible. We haven't even talked about the Mobley stuff, right? And and, and, and by the way, for a lot of people around the league, I, I I'm not gonna say I've been talking to a lot of people, but I've been watching these little posts and different things. The I think people are now just coming around to the fact that. Just because somebody tells you you're you you're a unicorn does not mean that that helps you. Like Evan Mobley to me has not shown me any game outside of the paint. Like I oh, think no, 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 he has some hold, thirty point games. Hold on, no, 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 no. I'm no, talking about. He's right. I'm talking he's about. Right. He has not shown me like if you look at the game, like like when you talk about being comfortable pulling up. I haven't seen no turnaround jump shots. I, I ain't, not I ain't had no. I ain't seen no step backs. I ain't seen no like like the touch. Like he he, he does not. He has not developed an what outside I, game at all. What I will say is is if they did trade Evan for Zion, it would and Zion could stay healthy long term. It would work out because. Even if Donovan Mitchell decided to leave, people would still go see DG and, and Zion. Like you, to see that alley, that's like some some Chris the Paul is, Tyson would Zion, Chandler would Zion stuff. Zion be happy here. Long as, we, as long as his only fan models can come to the game and they don't have no beef. And you got all. You, know, you got, I'm scared of Zion I'm, and Pierogies. That's a bad combo. And, and, and by the way, and, and by the way, I don't know if Cleveland got only fan girls. No, we that can't. Can get Zion him. Is, has only played more than 30 games once in four I know, seasons. I know. When, I can, when I, Zion's on the court, he, he unbelievable. Is a, he is. Unbelievable. G, you mentioned unicorns. He's a legit unicorn. He's unstoppable when he plays. The issue, he never plays. Ever. I can't have him up here with all these good corned beef sandwiches. I can't do it. I'm saying pierogies and corned beef is dangerous it. for uh, His for career Zion. numbers, and that includes Affordable like a rookie beef. year where you're not supposed you're, to score that much. His career good. average is It's 26, in his contract. He can't get it. 26 boards, 7 assists. Uh, excuse me, 26 points, 7 boards, 4 assists, 1 steal, 1 block a game. Hmm. And that's only averaging 32 minutes uh, he's, when he plays, he's a top five player, it's top, crazy. top seven player in the league. He just and, never plays. And, he, and he's doing all that at six two three oh five. That man is a monster. He's, he's not six two. I'm playing. He? No, he's joking. <laughs> How tall is he? He's he like six six, six, six on about pro the basketball same size reference, as me. but I think he's but a he little plays like a seven he plays like an animal. Who is six six? Zion. Zion. Basketball he's, reference lists him at six six, which six, I don't six. think is accurate. I thought he was six eight. Wow. I thought he was six five. He will turn twenty three in a week. He did he only 23? Not even. Not that's, another week. That's, <laughs> hey, look, hey, we be hating on listen, if he can get it together, I'm 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 old enough to remember was the Junior Zogas' feet was bad for like 10 years. And then his feet didn't it, like the same with him be. But but I will say that, man. Um Mobley to me, I think he's still gonna be really good. But I just think I'm looking at him more of a as a as a center that can, you know, handle the ball a little bit more and do things like but I don't I don't see no nothing in this game that says he's K D or Wimby or none of that. Like well, I don't, yeah. we've come up with a lot of outlandish stuff. Yes, we have. That actually worked out you know what? Sometimes I put segments in there and I'm like Yeah. I'm, I'm curious how, how much these yeah, guys will get that into. That was it. interesting. I, you guys were good. All right. We're gonna play a new game here, guys. Uh, Anthony. Oh shoot. Go take your position. <laughs> Anthony's coming out with something special. Making Anthony get off his ass right now. Yeah, I know. He was in Parma yesterday doing his laundry. <laughs> now he's here pouring truth <laughs> oh, in right, for you guys. Laundry. 
So here's how here's how the game's gonna work, everybody. You gotta go to G first. I think. We have six questions. Each yeah. person has two. One Browns question, one non Browns question. G's up first. Double cut. We're gonna do a little role playing. This is called the True Serum game. G right. for the first question is gonna become Kevin Stefanski. And G was just poured a nice glass of true serum. G, you wanna drink that true serum for me? Yeah, let me get a chaser ready. Chaser. It smells like gin. I'm not a gin guy. Not only is it truth serum, but he gets transformed into somebody else. You chase it. You gotta chase your drinks. So you? Garrett Bush is now Kevin Stefanski, <laughs> drunk off true serum. So Mr. Stefanski, my question for you is. What are realistic expectations for Deshaun Watson in 2023? Well, guys, I, I brought you guys all here today as coaches. We really want to talk about the philosophy of what we're going to do offensively. Now, we've been saying a lot that we're going to throw the ball. Um, we're going to throw the ball a little bit more. Uh, but one of the things that we have to watch for Deshaun is we still haven't got him back to – the way he was feeling when he was in Houston. I talked to him the other day. He's saying all the right things, but it's all about the body language. It's all about, you know, getting him acclimated. So the first three, four games of the season, we got to be, we, we got to be locked in and we got to have some easy wins for him. Easy passes, easy stuff so that we can open it up. I always envisioned us being a, a, a team that was going to spread people out. Uh, but the one thing that we got to do, we got to continue to not lose our identity as a running team. We need to really continue to work on getting Nick Chubb the, the football out of certain positions. And as Nick Chubb gets the football and they bring guys up, I think that's when Deshaun will have his best, you know, have, have his best, uh, you know, best game, best season. I think we start him off slow, but at the end of the season, if we can get his confidence rolling, um, he he's has his arm back. He has his legs underneath him. He's the healthiest I've seen. But as coaches, we have to fight the urge of just dropping him back 40, 50 times. Like, he can do that. I think if we start him off slow and get him to a, a place where we can, I think he can be – I think he may not have the numbers that he's going to have when he was in Houston. But I think he'll be way more efficient. Um, and it's up to us to keep that thing rolling while he's getting excited. He's excited. He's chomping at the pit now. Now, look. It could also roll off the. It could go off the wheels because Deshaun also wants to make plays sometimes, and he wants to show everybody that he's back. We have to. We have to keep that until I think he he ends up with a nice season. And if and if he plays and, and gets us, you know, he's efficient. Um, he's completing over 67, 68 percent of his passes. That's the number we're looking at. Not necessarily the yards. It's the efficiency, and that'll play. That'll that'll work as we get to the end of the season. How do you guys feel about Kevin Stefanski on True Serum speaking about Deshaun Watson for the I would love season? to ask him. Uh, I mean, I would like to it, ask. It's, it's an open Q&A. You could ask. True uh, Serum doesn't wear off for another three minutes. So, nah, <laughs> I was going to ask about the off the field stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know, hey, like, I, I'm open. open. No, I, 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 I don't think we want to go nope. down that road. Okay. I'll, Kevin I'll, Stefanski. I'll, Kevin, do you actually have a personality? I do. I do. They don't pay me to show that side. Uh, my wife thinks I'm funny, but you know, hey, you know. Kevin, you went on a podcast and said that we don't have to run the ball to throw anymore. But now you're going to throw the ball. You're going you're gonna to run to the throw for Deshaun. Is that going to change during the season? Well, well I think, Tybus, you know, as a player, you know, the game plan switches every week. That's a fact. Some weeks we throw it, some games we run it, but I think we got to do, we got to be good at either or uh, and okay. to do it in a good fashion. Kevin, are you going to mm -hmm. take the play sheet from us in front of your face this week, this year? Uh, you know what? <laughs> I like to, I like to play sheet in front of my face. It seems <laughs> like I'm a role playing. Like, look, I like, you know, let me see, bull. Let me see this. Look, see, that, this, this is nice, man. We do that. I got a nice beard, too, so that's all right. Uh, uh Go ahead. Andrew Berry, you or Paul T. Batesta, give us the nerd rankings. Who are the biggest nerds between uh, the three of you? Uh, listen, Paul is a savant. Like, Paul is one of those guys that he has a calculator and he has an abacus in his back pocket. Now, Andrew, Andrew is the sneaky guy. Andrew tries to act like he's not smart. Like, because where he's from, that's not cool. Like, so Andrew's like, nah, he, he, like he's the undercover guy. Yeah. I, listen, I used to get serious. <coughs> I got C minuses at, uh, at Yale, so it, you know I'm the, I'm the dumbest out of the three. Kev, so here it is, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Do you re how do, what do you really feel about DPJ? I think Donovan. <laughs> I, I like Donovan's game. I'm just not sure that Donovan is a is a difference maker. Okay. 
Um, so you are you on the D hop track? I really don't like him either. <laughs> only, yeah. only reason, only reason, the only reason, only reason we dealt with DeHop, DeAndre Hopkins is because that's what's the name's man. Okay. So we just, you know, every, quarter, every quarterback get his. T- we just never really interested. All right. So in the, let me ask you this last. Oh, well, we were out of time. No, for no I got one. No, Kevin I got one. Q C was wearing off. Kevin got. I, Kevin, we need to know whose side was you on, Baker or Odell's? Oh, okay. Oh, that's uh, that is a- actually, uh, <laughs> they both got on my nerves a little bit. Um, but to save face, I had to stay with the quarterback because it was the quarterback. You yeah. know, it's quarterback over receiver. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Baker didn't do it himself any, any justice. <laughs> Baker, mm-hmm. D-bag or not a D-bag? Next, look at you. Okay, look at you. <laughs> I would call next him a tool. Next up, Tyvis. All right, fair enough. Tyvis is our next Tyvis is true role playing. Uh, Tyvis is now Darius Garland, and it's Ooh. ironic that we've spoken more about Darius Garland. Just talking about you. Oh, man, wow. DG. But Darius, drink a little true serum. All of it. Drink all of it. We were just talking about you, Darius. Now that yeah. Darius Garland God dang. Darius. <laughs> is drunk on truth serum, my question first. Okay. Whew. And this is a five-minute truth serum. Whew. Darius, are you a top five point guard in the NBA? Ooh, man. Yeah, well, say it again. I, I, I Darius, are you, a, are you a top five point guard in the NBA today? Yeah, yeah, I'm a top five point guard in this NBA. I mean, listen, think about this. Playoffs come around. I'm the man that the, that the Cavs got to depend on. We all we went out and got Donovan Mitchell. And I don't know why we did. Like I wasn't handling Damn. business around here. You know, I'm not gonna say this. I'm gonna say this to y'all because y'all are my people. But come on, man, y'all know who y'all know who facilitate this. Who got in the playoffs when we was down to the Knicks? Who got us going again? Me. Yeah. Put the ball in my hands, man. I make things happen. Yeah. I'm the best point guard actually on this planet. But you know, yeah. Steph Curry got a little jump shot right now. You know, he obviously the kids is into that. But my game translate. See what I do can I can do it for years to come, right? If you don't think I'm top five now, I guarantee you you'll think I'm top five after this season for sure, hands down. Darius, and I won't. And and if we get rid of Donovan, I'm I'm fine with that. Darius, here's the most important question. Why do you not go to the same hairstylist that Earl goes to? All the famous people go to Earl. What's she called again, Earl? A loctician. Loctician. All the famous people go to her. What's her name again? Her name is Shanti. Shanti. Shout yeah. out to her. Everybody famous mm-hmm. goes to Shanti. Why do you not go see Shanti? Well, see, I'm like Samson. My strength is in my hair, you know, so I got... Well, she doesn't cut off your no, hair. No, no, no. See, what I'm saying is, like, okay. I got a... It's a certain type of way that I like my hairstyle, mm-hmm. and I've been dealing with the same girl for, for many years, so yeah. when you got money like me, you just fly them up here to get them wow. done for you, so, you know... Uh, speaking of Earl, when Earl said that uh, your running mate, Donovan Mitchell, is better than LeBron James, what were you thinking about that? I think that y'all should have fired him that day. I'm shocked. That, <laughs> I'm shocked that he's still on the show. You know, honestly, it was one of the most blasphemous things. It's like it's like McNuggets asking me, "Am I top five? Like that's a guaranteed answer. Everybody knows the answer to that question. So yeah, Earl should have been fired that day. I don't know why y'all still got him on payroll. Uh, you know, listen, Darius, are you uh, are you a better passer or a better scorer? So so this is the thing, G. You know. I try to be I, I'm really like that on the scoring side, but you know, I don't want to come off as a ball hog and I understand that, you know, I got people like Jared Allen who can't do nothing for himself. So I got to make sure he <laughs> involved. That's so I'm true. always looking to facilitate and put people on, you know, I'm like, I, I, I have my moments where I want to be like, not that Donovan's here. I can have my moments where I can be selfish, but at heart, I'm really a pass first guy. I'm like, I'm like a uh, magic. I come down he he all the time with mine. So, you know, I, I, I think I'm a better passer. Would you accept LeBron on his team. You know, LeBron could come on this team if he want to, man. But at the end of the day, the ball need to be in my hands. LeBron's time has came and went. You know, I'm the future now. So, you know, if he want to come and play a role and be one of those guys that can spot up and shoot, we can take him. But for, for right now, the ball need to be in my hands. Are we sure this is Darius or, or, or Tyvis? This is this is Tyvarius. <laughs> Tyvarius. That's a character right, from Game of Thrones. It Bull, is. you're up next. Drink a little truth okay. here, Bull. Bull is now Greg Newsom. Oh, wow. coming off an MVP Oof. appearance in his celebrity softball game. Hey, Greg, what did you think of Joe Woods as a defensive coordinator? Damn, how did I get so skinny? How did I get so skinny right Your ankles. <laughs> I think my foot weighs more than he does. Uh, what's the question again? What do you feel about Joe Woods as a defensive coordinator? Well, let me tell you something. Thank God that asshole's out of here because he sucks. <laughs> he put me in a bit. I weigh about a buck 12 soaking wet. All right. If you walk past me on the street, you think I was playing for uh, 
some high school team or something because I don't look like a professional football player. I got a weird looking ba- batting stance, but I hit some home runs in that in that game too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe Wood screwed me over. I was great as a rookie. I had a tremendous season. Denzel Ward's off farting around with his money. I don't know what the hell he's up to. <laughs> um, and meanwhile, I had a good rookie season, and this idiot's putting me in the slot. I got to tackle running backs. I can't be tackling running backs. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> Joe Woods is a buffoon, and thank God we fired the guy. Now we got this old <laughs> bastard, Jim Schwartz, in here. He may be old as the earth, but at least he knows what the hell he's doing. He's not going to make me tackle running backs. <laughs> Well, that, thank God we got him in here. Well, not since we tell him. <laughs> and I'm going to the club tonight. I'll see you there. <laughs> since, we, since we telling the truth. Since we telling the truth. Hey, man, oh, l- listen, how you let uh, Mark, Mark Amberson come to your position, dog? Listen, he didn't steal my position. I welcome the young guy in because I'm not insecure. And he's he's big. He's big. So he should be playing the freaking slot because he can tackle a running back. <laughs> Let him get all injured and beat up. I got to be out in the club and hang with the ladies. <laughs> do you know, did you get your car back? I'll tell you something. I did not get my car back because they used my car as a battering ram. <laughs> G-Noo. Commit a robbery, those bastards. G-Noo, why are you so angry, I'm getting dog? A, I'm, getting a new, I'm getting a new car. What you, What'd you get? I'm getting a brand new Lexus SUV. That's a soccer mom car. Oh, is it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know much about cars. All right, we got three more. Okay. G Bush is back in the hot seat. G Bush, you're now Kobe Altman. That's a soccer mom car. <laughs> That's, if a, I rich, came, that's if I, a rich soccer mom. If I came up here with a Lexus SUV, you'd be like, you downgraded, bro. You, <laughs> you should have said, I'm coming with that Bentley truck. They can have that yeah, little truck, right, man. I got that go. Bentley truck here coming through. All right, G, drink a little truth serum. You are <laughs> Kobe Altman. <laughs> and my question for you, G. Who is he now? Kobe Altman. Oh, right. President of basketball <laughs> operations for the Cleveland Cavaliers. If we could go back in time about a year from now and you have the chance to redo or undo the Donovan Mitchell trade, would you still do it? Uh, yeah, McNuggets. I, I'm definitely. Uh, I, I I'd say in one word, hell yeah. That's two words I know. Uh, <laughs> but at the time, we were looking at the organization. We we're looking at what the pieces and parts we had. Frankly, we thought Evan Mobley was going to be on a certain track. We thought Evan year two would start to show his outside game. That didn't happen. Hold on, wait a minute. Then okay. we we always <laughs> knew that Donovan was from New York. We always knew he's going to throw out the first pitches and things like that. Well, we started to hear things, the little rumblings behind the, the scenes, and Donovan does a great job of, of, you know, being a corporate role. His father is, is in sports, so he knows how to play it right. But, you know, w- when we got Donovan, our hopes was we were going to really elevate our play. We were really going to get at least to the Eastern Conference Finals with the team that we had. But Jared Allen, uh, we found out, wasn't that guy we needed him to be. Darius Garland, I, I'll give him credit. Darius, uh, he didn't take it hard. Darius had a really good season. Um, but what really hurt us was the fact that Donovan, to get Donovan, it took us three first-round picks. A lot of those first-round picks, people may say they're not going to help a good team now. However, it does help you get other guys in trades, via trades. Free agency is a hit-or-miss thing here in, in small, more, smaller markets. If you, it, you know, you got me up against it, I think it was a really great move in the beginning. But now that you look at back at it and you look at what we gave up in in you know, Lori marketing turned out to be a great player. We developed him here. We actually had him playing three and a lot of people in around the, in, you know, around the NBA didn't think he could do that. Lori turned into somebody awesome. Um, you know, I do think we, we got off Colin Sexton, um, that Colin Sexton thing. Um, he averaged 24, but we, we didn't think he was going to be a difference maker. It turns out he's not a difference maker out there. Uh, Abaji's hit or miss. Um, so he was part <laughs> of the deal. But at the end of the day, if we had to go back and do it all over again, we could have did what we did this year if we would have just kept the same same team and let it grow. So I would say, yeah, that's on us. Kobe, any truth to the rumor that you traded Laurie Marketing because he's a man named Laurie? Um, no, no, no. I, I actually, I like the name Lori. Like I, you know, I thought Lori, Lauren, I liked all yeah. the L's. Kobe, Kobe, you know, I, I understand. I think you guys kept y'all pick for next year's draft. Any, any chance y'all land Bronny James? Uh, listen, if, if, if it's a package deal with LeBron, listen, if I, we have to take, we'll, we'll sign LeBron's wife if he wants us to. 
his gardener, his uh, his youngest daughter, his son, well, all of them. Package it. Come on back. I got what you need. <laughs> got what you need. Hey, Kobe. Yes. Uh, can you elaborate on why you came out and said there will be no sweeping changes with this roster, knowing damn well that the majority of your team is soft? I'm a GM. Damn. I'm a GM. I was just lying, dog. Like, what you want me to say? Like, you guys ask me a question, or I'm gonna come out and be like, "Yeah, my team is soft as hell." I then I can't even move Jared Allen. Like, so I got at least build him back up and get some trade value for him. Now I said no sweeping. Like, I don't know what sweeping is, but I can say major. I didn't say when no major trades gonna be made or consequential trades. So it, I was just grandstanding. It is what it is. I gotta get value from these guys if you want me to make a deal. Kobe, uh, speaking of sweeping, would you rather in the playoffs next year have Josh uh, have Jared Allen playing? for you or being the guy who sweeps up the court of the sweat. I would like him to do concessions as well. Sw okay. Sweeping. Okay. Um, but he's a good guy. Shout out to Jaron. Uh, yes. I, I think he was one of the guys who, you know, he came here. He was one of the first people we signed. Um, and remember, we had Andre Drummond at one point in it time. It was ugly. And it was nasty. By the way, five, six years ago, I was on a plane with you sitting two rows behind you, and I started puking on that flight. Did you notice? And were you appalled? Yes, I was. I was like, there's an extremely large obese man behind me. <laughs> <laughs> and you <he> was... <laughs> And I did not know what necessary to say large and obese <laughs> from one or the other. I, you were you were snoring, but you were awake. How are you snoring, but you were awake? You were, you were conscious, but you were snoring. I had never saw that before. I was confused. <laughs> uh, next up, we are going back to Tyvis, and Tyvis is going to play the role of one Miles Garrett. So Miles Garrett, if you would, please sip a little truce. Oh, here this is crazy. Okay. Is this crazy? Oh, no, wait a minute. All right, Miles. Ooh. Was Davian Clowney a good teammate? Dang. You know, so so JD, you know, JD was he, he started off cool, man. Real funny guy and all, you know. And you know, I thought we had something good going on. Obviously, you know, he had one of his most productive seasons, you know, when he was first here with me, you know, obviously because, you know, defense is playing for me and whatnot. Uh, so, you know, he had the little mismatch every year. But last year, man, when he when he did what he did, I thought it was some sucker stuff, bro. I really did. I, I, I don't really respect bro no more for that. Like, he could have came to me as a man and we could have handled it like that. But, you know, he decided to, to be a little girl and go to the media and say what he said with that little slick shade. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Our defense is, is trying to get me to the Hall of Fame. I'm the best player on this defense. I mean, listen, the only reason you had the career you had is because huh, defenses was worried. I mean, offenses was worried about me. So if it ain't my fault that you can't get home. You feel what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know, I, he, he we would start it off good, but he a sucker in my books now. Uh, Miles, when you see J Jadavian wearing that head condom there, <laughs> uh, do you feel pl like players that wear those things are soft? No, nah, man, you know, see, see, Pooh Shiesty started this thing, yeah. man. You probably know who that is. I know the great so Pooh, Pooh Shiesty. Shiesty, this rapper, you know, he started off with this, <laughs> with great. this ski mask thing, and I everybody swear that they hit and lick. Oh, my fault. They robbing people. Yeah. Y I, I got to dumb it down. <laughs> yeah, they, they think these dudes hitting licks nowadays or whatnot. So everybody want to be tough and whatnot. You know, they just posers. Mm. Me, I'm like that on the field. I'm like that on and off the field, even though, you know, I am into astrology and, you know, I like animals and dinosaurs and stuff like that. Hey, man, yeah, man. <laughs> like, do you, like, if you going on dates, like, do you, like, is you really big on these dinosaurs, Miles? Like, is you, is you talking dinosaurs to the ladies? Like, yeah, man, you know what, man? You'd be shocked how many women like dinosaurs. You know, we sit there and we spend all that time talking about T-Rexes and stuff, and then, you know, <laughs> later on, I might show them my T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are, mo we are moving on to the last one here. <laughs> Bull, you are now Terry Francona. We are praying for his speedy recovery. Take a little sip of true serum here, Bull. Okay. <laughs> Who would have known Miles Garrett was in the role playing? <laughs> Crazy. So Tito, why oh, does yeah. Miles Garrett continue? Uh, not Miles Garrett. I'm why does Miles Shaw them, but it won't be continue good. to get at bats every day? <laughs> I miss that we don't have Michael Bourne anymore because I like to call him Borny. Borny. <laughs> we had Borny. Uh, what's the question there? Why, why do you continue to give Miles Shaw McNuggets. every day at bats? All right, here's the thing. I, I I have never been able to share this with you before, but that's uh, actually pretty good. But uh, uh, many, many, many years ago, I took a picture in a Halloween costume. It was very inappropriate. It's an inappropriate picture. I can't say what it is because, <laughs> well, I get in trouble. 
But uh, I don't know why I've given him like a southern accent. Because you don't really have a southern accent, but that's what I'm going with. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, I took an inappropriate picture of a Halloween costume. It was uh, it was the 1940s. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm 87 years old, really. Uh, and I didn't know you couldn't wear this particular thing, but I did. And uh, now Miles Straw has a picture of it, and he will not throw it away. And he told me that if I don't play him every day, I'm going to stop doing the Southern accent because it doesn't make any sense. Uh, if I don't keep playing him every day, that uh, he will put that out to the media. So that's why, because there's no other reasonable explanation for it. Miles Straw uh, is... Well, I was going to say he's the worst hitter I've ever seen, but I have seen Austin Hedges a lot, too. So he's the second worst hitter I've ever seen in my entire baseball career. I think I, think I from my bed at the Cleveland Clinic at 65 years old, would be a better hitter than Miles Straw. Let's be honest, the guy can't hit a lick. So uh, he has in, in, in inappropriate photos of me. That's the only reason that uh, I play him. And that... That's true much I, I've, I've got you've gotten an out of me after all these years. Uh, we have no. We I can't have no believe we were stupid enough as an organization to trade for him and give him an extension. We have no honest. questions for Tito. That shirt off and Antonetti, they're smart guys, but they uh, they shit the bed on this one. Let's be honest. <laughs> uh, I say good day, sir. You got nothing for me? Nope. All right, I'm gonna get up my, right. my motorbike and head. What do you guys think? Fun? Not Why fun? did you rush the you rush the end of our segment? Because because the chat was like, ah, this is long. They said it was good the first round. Everybody had one. We should do truth serum one round, we but got, it was funny. It's 14 knuckleheads in there. <laughs> so, I mean, who cares what they have to say? Is well, that I, why you I, were I rushing us sure. at the end? No, actually, I didn't see the chat. I was just curious oh. what we could. I felt bad because Tito went to the hospital last night. I, I oh, felt what? Bad a, answering. Listen, we, we're, I'm not making fun of Tito. We're having fun. We love Tito. Hey, Tito, I got another question for you. Yes, right. thank you, Earl. Where are you parking the scooter at these days? I was gonna say something really inappropriate just now, but I better hold up. Uh, I, you know, I, I got many girlfriends out there, and uh, I mean, this is kind of inappropriate too. So I, I just leave it in front of whichever girl I'm with that night. You know, who knows? This is oh, wow. Oh, wow. Ooh, wow. We're trying to get guys on the show here, Bull, and you think, what the hell are you doing? I'm kidding. I don't know what I, I, I don't know if he's got girls. Is he even married? I think I don't even know if he's married. I don't know. Let him do whatever the hell he wants. But he's not allowed to have sex. He's a man. <laughs> he's off the honey pack, huh? <laughs> or maybe he's married and he doesn't have girlfriends. I don't All right, Bull, you know what? It is 12-17, which means it's time yeah. to tell everybody that the Call of Companies Championship is coming up later next month at the famous Firestone Country Club. Check out all your favorite senior tour golfers right here in the beautiful state of Ohio. Fun, family-friendly events for everyone. Free concerts and free admission for kids. You get all that information for tickets and extra at callinggolf.com. Bull, give us a number under 10 and a word to put in the chat here for our next right, USFL ticket giveaway. let's go with six giveaway. and slap dick. <laughs> the sixth person to put slap dick in the chat will now win. <laughs> Anthony, start counting slap dicks. The sixth one is one of the family four pack of tickets to the USFL Yo. championship game. Yes, the six slap six. dick in the chat Yo. is winning tickets, Anthony. Nobody I, got, I got to look up on the chat just to see this. I got to see it. I got to see it. I got to count it. I want to count it. Look. Hold on. Gee, you can Spelling doesn't win. count for this one either. Spell it however you want. <laughs> you look. I mean, they're not complicated. It, I guess the only complicated is whether it's one word or two, but. Abacus was a tough one. Yeah, slap dick could be one word, two words. It's up to yeah, you. I haven't seen any in there yet, Anthony. It's very no easy to spell. Slap slap hey, and we ain't seen we ain't, ain't listen. Seen and we ain't seen one yet. They keep pausing it. They're like, no, I'm like, it's pause worthy. We are not putting that in the chat. <laughs> oh, they'll put it there if they want the tickets. So far, no one's put it. Nobody <laughs> ain't doing it. Look, <laughs> look, nobody. nobody. There. Listen, they're, <laughs> they're, I'm not lying. I'm <laughs> dead serious. I don't ever look at the chat during the show live. Yeah. I am looking at it right now. Literally nobody has put. Oh, one. We got one. Kenny Miller's the first slap dick. Five more slap dicks. He said slap stick. Yeah, he actually didn't even spell it right. Yeah, he was like. Does it count? No, it does. We got one. Nope, slap stick. He, he just it's spelled. probably getting corrected. Okay, well, you know what? While we're, while we're waiting for slap dicks to come into the uh, chat here, not you guys. We're waiting for the comments. Not you guys. Bull said the sixth person. We have one currently in there. Yeah. Uh, we'll win a family four-pack of tickets to the USFL championship game. If not, no one wants to put it in there, then we will uh, get to it later with Mike Pereira. We'll ask Mike Pereira for a word. 
But participate in it. Demond says we refuse to participate <laughs> in this debauchery. What's that? He refuses to participate. They said we for we we as the chat refuse to participate in this debauchery. I, that's right, because it's only twenty people in their mama's basement. So let's get. <laughs> Uh, we got another one. That's two. That's two. We got three, another one. No, we got three here. I think. Okay. Okay. Four. Anthony's got four slap dicks. All right. Cool. How many more, Anthony? Tap me on the shoulder when you get two more slap dicks in the chat. There we go. Oh, then, oh, there's one. Five. Mike just loves saying it. Uh oh. Uh oh. Next one wins. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic TV, everybody. Has there oh. ever been more drama over the next slap dick right, in the history of television? All right. Let's move. What are we doing now, Mike? Let's go. Okay. Next up. Evan got it. Evan419 got it. Shout out Evan419. Anthony will figure out how to get you those tickets. Very good, uh, thank you to the chat for Ooh. the ones who participated, the ones <laughs> who did not. I do not blame you. And Shout speaking of second year things, this is the second year of the SFL. <laughs> this next topic is something I, I need a Tyvis for. Tyvis, a pretty common phrase in sports or, or theory in sports, <coughs> way of thinking at least, is that guys make the biggest jump in their career – between years one and two. So after their rookie season, entering their sophomore season. There's a couple guys in the Browns who are expected to play major roles this year who were good <coughs> as rookies, solid as rookies, and are now expected to be major contributors. You played in the NFL. You were once a rookie. You played four years. Man, that, a little was, such, that was such a, a lifetime ago. Why do you think, and or do you believe it's true or not, that players make the biggest jump in their careers from the end of their rookie seasons to the beginning of their second seasons. Well, I think it, I think it is true because it's like anything, you know, once you go through something once, you know, you know what to expect the year two. So, you know, as a rookie, you coming in, depending on if you're a highly dra uh, drafted guy, you know, they're throwing you right in the lineup, you know, stuff like that. So you're trying to figure out, you know, A, are you good enough to even be in the NFL? You know, so you got to build that confidence over that first season. So a guy like, you know, Martin, who's who came in as a third, third round, fourth round pick, I think, you know, obviously he got his feet wet, made some plays. He got that confidence knowing that he's good enough to belong in here. So next thing that the player is trying to juggle is the playbook, because obviously plays change from college to the NFL. There's much more structure to it. Um, so he's trying to figure out, okay, now I got to make sure that I know what I got on certain plays. You know, the, the, the pieces is moving. This ain't like going to take a history test. The pieces move. You got to know all the checks and adjustments. So you, now you're trying to make sure that you got your checks and adjustments down pat and making sure that you actually playing the right thing. You know, as you get towards the end of the season, you pretty much should have the playbook under your down pack so you know what to expect. Um, you understand the game speed of from college to the NFL. You understand that everybody in the NFL is really good. Um, and I think the reason you can make the next, the big jump the next year is because you don't have to come in worrying about are you good enough? You have that answer. You don't have to come in worrying about do I know the playbook? You should have that down pack, even though for him it is a different playbook. But Jim Schwartz is running cover one dang near 95 percent of the time. So he's really dumbing it down for those people. Um, and now you're able to look at formations and get a tail sign of what is to come you know now i'm not worried about what i got i'm worried about what this offense is coming out in what formation is it who in my garden what routes can i expect like you can expand the brain so now you're able to to jump things and make more plays because you can anticipate what's coming so i think that a lot of the times is why you see the biggest jump from year one to year two because now you have the little things down packed and now you can anticipate the game and understand what's about to come let me let me ask you this because I always I always thought about this in, in terms of like your, your life cycle when you're a younger player like you know you just worried about like I don't know where my apartment is how much money I'm gonna get paid do I have money do I need tickets like do I need to like what you know different things like that just every day like every day little like living stuff right mm -hmm. and like when you played on, on on good teams where they had veterans and, and guys had Super Bowl aspirations on those on those uh, you know those rosters mm -hmm. When you were like, how do how do how do veterans get young dudes who they know gonna have to contribute locked in, playing with a sense of urgency when they got their whole career in front of them? Like, <clears throat> you they got everything in front of them. You trying to win, you trying to get playing time. You want to be an all pro. You you might want to go to the club. You might want to you might want some girls. You might like all these different things that are that is a life cycle. But yeah. some players are gonna be at the end of that life cycle where they like I didn't already got all this yeah. and I need you to lock in and have the same level of t tomorrow ain't guaranteed type feeling. 
how do they get how do how do they go about that in a lot so of it's them? certain ways you know it, like from being in Seattle obviously you know I'm with the LOB and you know how they they go about business is you know everybody that comes in they're going to groom them and make sure that you understand the culture that we set here so if I'm a rookie and I'm coming in and you know, they have a thing where everybody tags off on the ball. If I'm a rookie and I don't want to tag off on that ball, then you better believe that, you know, Sherm, Bobby, Cam, somebody coming to say something to me. Hey, young blood, young rook, this is how we do it. Go tag off on that ball. I don't care where it's at. Go touch that ball. So you got these older guys that's setting the standard and holding these younger guys to it. When it comes to, you know, partying and clubbing and whatnot, you know, they don't really – it's not really a lot that they say, you know, for that. It's about – Make sure you could do what you want to do, but make sure when we get on this field, you locked in. Okay, like you can. I'm not gonna tell you not to party and whatnot. It's a bunch of veterans in the NFL who I know that don't drink during the season. Mm-hmm. They don't do nothing during the season. You know, they have their fun in the off season, but during the season, they're not gonna consume alcohol or anything like that. You know, that's 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 the veteran way. But obviously, these young guys who got a pocket full of money, you know, they want to get out there and see, you know, what what new fish I can catch. You know, I can go pop bottles in the club and do stuff like that. You know, it's fine as long as you're handling your business, as long as you're not affected by football or the, it's not affecting your game, then it's cool. And a lot of guys do a pretty good job of handling that because they understand the opportunity that is being presented. Now, when I went to San Francisco, that was more of a younger crowd. Everybody was around my age, so these guys was going out all the time. I was seeing guys get get. When we made sixteen thousand for that week, he'd go to the, go out and spend sixteen thousand. He was getting the check, blowing the check. That's the Damn. type of stuff they was on. Uh, but the, <laughs> but you but the difference was he partied a lot. But when it came time to put that work in, he was up eight seven in the morning doing workouts, doing the extra stuff, making sure he did his film session. He got his work done. So, like I say, it, you got to have a healthy balance where it's okay if you want to party and do all that other thing, but just know that football comes first, and you got to make sure that you're doing your well, work there. During, during the season, like, because, like, you know, you see a lot of times, like, with last year we watched, the, like, they talked about it a, a hundred times about, getting on the same page like mm-hmm. defensive backs. Yeah, there's a lot of times that we we see in the off season the quarterback get guys together like yep. you know what I'm saying and be like yo we gonna run these routes so we, we got timing we I know how you moving like is that something that DBs is doing as no, well? No, and we should. You know, I just seen Darius Slay talking about That's this. Crazy. It's, it's crazy that the quarterbacks link, the receivers link, the tight ends link, but for some odd reason, DBs can't seem to find the time to link. Now, don't get me wrong. It's a few DBs that get together and, you know, share games, share tips and stuff like that. But as far as a whole weekend or week where we just get together and, and, and share tips, <laughs> I don't think that happens for DBs. But a lot of the times, you know, guys got trainers. That's the thing. Everybody got their own little trainer that they deal with and like like uh, McNuggets got a guy the footwork king you know he got guys guy. that he comes in he you go to the footwork king and you just so happen Darius Slay is there and Aqib Tlaib is there it's like that type of thing like a, they link up like that so it's not something where it's a set destination for all DBs to go to. It's just we all mess with the same trainer. It's a guy named Oliver Davis who does a really phenomenal job of training DBs, and he trains them at in the NFL, college, and high school, and young kids. Really good guy. A lot of a lot of vets go to him because he understands the game and how you move and how you see the game. You know, the, the reason I ask that question is, you see, like we, we, you know, I got, you know, I be in the lab. I would just be watching junkie, little, little football junkie stuff. <laughs> like, like it'd be like when you talk about like guys, like you know, there's moving parts. You got Juan Thornhill, you had Grant Delpit, right? Mm-hmm. You got Newsom, you got Emerson, you got Ward. Like yeah. th- these guys want to be, you know. I remember uh, Newsom saying a couple of years ago when they were talking about going against uh, the Cincinnati Bengals and how they felt like they was a, they had the number one secondary going against the number one like uh you know receiving core yeah and so when you got like three new guys like like that it just it it, it reminds me like everybody don't be on that same type of time like the legion of boom you said right all of them like with cam chancer and brandon browner and and and, and guys like that and obviously richard sherman like it seems like they was like they had a special thing where they was like yeah we all together like we this is we, we, yeah. we not only our corners or our safeties, but I see a lot of teams don't do it like that. Like, you know, mm-hmm. they literally was like, no, we Earl Little them. They was like, yo, this is what it is. 
how did how did they go about developing that, or is it was just something like they was just like because usually you get a corner, I'm the best corner, or you get a safety, I'm the best safety. You don't get people saying this is the we got the best secondary or the no fly zone. Yeah. In, in, in Denver, how did they? Well, they would. Well, I, I, it's funny because I would ask Sherm that question. You know, how did this all happen? And I and you know Sherm got there. He wasn't starting. Cam started. Earl was a first round pick. Brandon Browner, they got him from the CFL, and he came in. He been dominant, but Sherm was the only one out of those out of those four that really didn't start. You know, he only started because I think Marcus Trufant got hurt in the game and somebody uh, somebody went to nick corner or went to nickel and he came in, he played corner. So that's how he got his start. Obviously, he passed some good plays and he ended up starting for the rest of that season. But um, these guys were just dedicated. You know, they was – those guys in particular, they all studied together. And that's the thing. If a great secondaries – you got to force you got to have somebody that right. force it, you know, like listen after practice DBs. We watch a film or something like that or after practice. Don't know DB go nowhere. We all doing extra drills. You need that one vocal guy that's going to force it because the, he understands the importance of everybody being on the same page. If everybody's on the same page last year. We don't have people getting cut wide open in right. the secondary and giving up touchdowns. We don't lose the Jets game with the Carolina game isn't close. We don't have things like that. You have to force it now. Juan Thornhill seems like he might be the guy to do that because he's been to the Super Bowl. He's been in some some good, decent secondary. I ain't going to say Kansas City secondary is great. They have some decent secondaries. So he knows what it takes to get there. It's going to be up to him to get these guys, get Denzel, get Martin, and get G. New and get Dale Pitt all in the room together. The best way to learn is to see it and talk about it. We need to watch a game together and talk it out. How do you see it? What do you see on this formation? What are you thinking on this formation? So when we get to the game, now I know how he thinks. So now we can communicate because I already know what you think. If you see what I see, then we can see the same thing. We talk in the same language. And I think that's the most key important part that I didn't think happened last year. You know, I, I was often told growing up that how can you tell it was a good defensive practice? The communication. They nonstop talking. Why is Fred Warner one of the best linebackers in, in, in the NFL? Because he talks nonstop. Fred will point out every single thing. When I played safety and, and San Fran and my one little start against the Raiders, yes, my one little starter against the Oakland Raiders, it was things that I didn't see. So Fred would be on the left side of the formation. I'd be on the right side. You know what Fred would say? Hey, Tyvis, alert, alert. This this, this uh, number three is on the ball. Get ready for the over route. So I'm looking. I'm already looking at my own thing. He say that. I see. I say, oh, okay. Ball is snapped. I see his pass. Guess what? My eyes go right to three because that's who I got. So you got to have guys that's communicating like that. And like I said, it's secondary. They got the talent. They just got to talk. They need to, they need to find the time to spend some time together in a film room and talk. It's not going to be enough because I don't know if they're doing it because a lot of teams do it like sometimes they do DBs all together some teams do corners in one room safeties in another room you got to keep them together talk about it right there but talk about it outside of this building that's where you see J3 going crazy like you know a lot of guys leave the building and we don't do nothing after we leave this building that was crazy you need you got to keep talking about it because that's, that's the only way everybody's going to be on the same page that's what makes secondaries work out is everybody's on the same page and to get to uh, Martin Emerson because I know that was a topic you know what's one thing that I can see Martin Emerson doing if I was Martin Emerson and this was year two for me <coughs> don't let them limit you bro that at the end of the day don't limit don't don't limit yourself you know if they everybody's like oh you're the third best corner no forget that be the number one corner on this team because Denzel's already got his bag G news trying to get his bag there nobody is no rule that says that you have to solidify yourself and be the third corner no, you can be the best cover corner on this team and ultimately be the best corner. I think what you need to do is take a step. You got the confidence. You made plays. You got a ton of PBUs. You went up against Mike Evans and shut him down, who's probably a Hall of Famer one day. So you got what it takes to play in this league. Don't let them tell you that you you corner number three on this roster. Become corner number one on this roster and get your hands on some of them pick. Get picks. I'm sick of the, the PBUs. That's cool and all, and that's fine. That's like Denzel's thing. Denzel does a great job of playing the hands. G New obviously still don't have a pick on this year. But if you can find a way to turn that ball over, take them balls and make them interceptions, then you you call out your number out what you want, and and they would un, you will undeniably be the number one corner. So that's my advice to you. And my challenge to you is to get some picks this year and don't limit yourself to being just coming in when it's nickel. Come in on base. That's what you really want to do. Look at this insight you don't get from other places. That, that was experience. phenomenal. Time. Really, no really great. Oh, well, insight. thank you. I appreciate now, that. Now we're gonna Go wrap up the segment. We got a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
We're going to wrap this up. I'm going to give you some Tyvis Powell trivia from his playing career. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Did he got picks? Let me see if he got some no, picks. No, no, no. All right. True or false? Mm. In Tyvis played 18 games in the NFL. Did I? Uh, <laughs> That's a lot. Are you asking Tyvis or are you asking the chat? No, no, I'm saying. Oh, I'll, no, I'm, at, not, I'm asking you guys. Well, I probably Tyvis, I, sh- I should know the answer. I True hopefully. or false? So, Tyvis played 18 games in the NFL. True or false? None of those games were against the AFC North, an AFC North team. True or false? Tyvis answered oh, I last. Know, I know the answer. Go ahead. I'm going to say true. Tyvis would have told us. He, he, there's no way he's been on the show for over a year and hasn't brought up when I played the Steelers. You never know. The he, I just got a lot of he, play, no he played on the Browns, so that, that's the only AFC North like he would have got. But no, I don't think he played against no AFC North team. NFC man. Tyvis, did you ever play against the AFC North? In the regular season? Correct. No, yeah, I, no, no, I didn't. You did not. That's no, correct. No, no. I played. I played the Bengals in the preseason. I played the Steelers in the preseason. There you go. Mm. All right, but not in the regular season. Okay. True or false? Tyvis forced a fumble in the NFL. True. He's uh, yeah, 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 come on. Yeah, he got a turnover. Yeah, yeah, he got a turnover. It's yeah. a fact. I should actually. Yeah, I should yeah. remember who it was against. Yeah, it was against uh, the Cardinals. Right. Yeah, and it should have been it should have been back to back because when I play Oakland the next week I dropped a pick and it was unbelievable. It was. I thought you had the best hand since Randy Moss. Well, so this is so this is the thing, you know. They, let me let me give some context on this. So, <laughs> I'm this is my first NFL start. So everybody that don't know, okay, the Cardinals game was the week before the Oakland game, right? right? So the o- the Cardinals game I forced the fumble, right? It's like two minutes left. I'm like, oh, yeah, we did it. I'm about to get into the media, and I'm about to tell everybody. That, you know, I should have been playing all along, you know, but, you know, they, <laughs> they're trying to keep me on the bench. But you see what I do. I make plays when I come in the game. Unfortunately, that got killed because the game winning touchdown got thrown on me. Shout out to Christian <laughs> Kirk. I got you paid, baby. I need a, I need my cut. Hey, wait, wait, anyway, that was from Josh Rosen. Yeah, right? Josh Rosen <laughs> threw a dime back in the end zone. We're not even going to go there, though. <laughs> so I make the start next. So I'm thinking I'm about to get cut at this point. I'm third string safety anyways. I'm like, oh, they about to cut me. They about to bring somebody in. My boy Jeff Halfley, shout out to you have BC going to do their thing this year. He said, forget that, Tyvis. You know, because we put you in a bad spot. We told you to play corner all week. We put you in the game at safety. You wasn't mm-hmm. even prepared. I said, that's not an excuse. But anyways, he said, we're going to roll you out there. And you're going to start safety. It's a Thursday night game against Oakland. I said, bet. Let's go. Let's do it. All right? So I make my first start. I come out to smoke. They say, Tyvis Powell. I do the Sherm out to smoke. Sherm was mad, but that's neither here nor there. Um, we get to the game. All right? It's... Uh, <laughs> All week, I'm watching film. So, I, usually I play the game during the week. I was playing the PlayStation. Mm-hmm. I didn't play the game at all. I watched iPad probably every day, all day, which was good because I got in the game and I knew exactly what was to come. So, what I knew, what I, from film study, what I learned is they had this running back. I can't think of his first name, but his last name was Rashard. When he came in, he was their receiving running back. Anytime mm-hmm. he came in out the backfield and ran a route, 95% of the time he was Chris, running. Wasn't it Chris Richard? I don't play for the he played for the Raiders. He, he, yeah, I, just, what, I don't yeah, yeah. I don't care. I don't care right, what don't his matter. name is. His last yeah. name is Richard. But anytime he came in the game, he was running 95%. It was an outward breaking route. 95% of the time he was not going to run an inward breaking route out the backfield. On this on this particular play, I got matched up with him. Boom, he comes out the backfield. He gave me this nice little hezzy. Huh. And faking inside like he was going. I took one step inside, but in my mind, I said, no, no, no. He's going outside. Boom. Take the foot. Break out of it. Boom. Come throw the ball. Derek Carr throws it. I lay out for the pick, which I shouldn't have did. I should have just ran through it. But I laid out for the pick. What y'all don't know is I broke my wrist in college. So I wore this big cast thing on my wrist, which allowed it from to keep it from going back because my wrist don't go back. So when I did that, it's hard to catch the ball like this. So if I would have caught it like this, I would have been all right. But to catch it like this was harder. Tipped off my hands. The running back catches the ball, gets a 20-yard explosive. Oh. It was um, Sherm had to get oh. it down in front of me. And oh. it, that was that. So, yeah, that's what happened. All right, oh. final true or false. <laughs> Oh. Wait, and this last one's brought to us by PCC Airfoils because these facts have come from the <laughs> inner web. If you're looking for a job, career advancement, and great benefits, well, PCC Airfoils is a leading manufacturer in Northeast Ohio. All locations of PCC Airfoils in East Lake Menor, Wycliffe, and Minerva are hiring for all positions. Start at $18 and up, plus full benefit packages, paid time off, and a signing bonus. You can apply online at precast.com slash careers to learn more. So the final true or false. So Tyvis started his that one game in your last – year playing in the regular season yep and he played in seven games that year one start which you won over (laughs) Oakland yes in the other six games that he played this season the Niners were winless 
<laughs> is that true? True or false? <laughs> that, I, I, I think it was true because I, I, th- I don't think he started getting no dubs until uh, your boy started playing. Jimmy uh, G, right? The, uh, the quarterback. Nick uh, Mullins? Here you played in, in weeks. Uh, oh, yeah. After the Oakland game, I got cut. So <laughs> I got cut. Let, it's crazy. I had the best game. I had a really productive game. Everybody told me, great job. That Tuesday came around, cut. But I ended up coming back like the last two games. You of the came season. back at the end, right? You yeah, played two more games two after games. that. <laughs> and you, you guys, you lost to the, the Bears 14 to 9. Oh, that's when uh, Tariq Cohen had that dang punt return good to he got the hurt. house. Oh my, it was pathetic. And then you lost a wild one to the Rams, forty-eight to thirty-two. Yeah, that was we was trying to we at that at that point I, it oh, you was. You guys were getting killed. Yeah, it was no point quarter. of winning the game. They wanted the better draft pick. Uh, we'd have won that game. We'd have had a lesser draft pick. So um, that's when the starters got pulled. The only saving grace of that year was G- George Kittle was trying to break the record. So they was force feeding him the ball that whole game. That's what happened. That he game. had a touchdown at the end of the game. Yeah, he broke so the record. Got- Travis Kelsey broke the record, right. and then like two hours later, Kittle broke. Right, it. right, right. Go ahead, Mike. So we have Mike Pereira coming on in about five minutes. Yeah. So the next person, the fifth person to put the word Mike in the YouTube chat is going to win our final family four pack of tickets to the USFL championship. Technically not the a fifth word, person but a name. To put the name Mike, it is Mike Pereira's name. And while we do that, let's get a chance to learn. Oh, Anthony, say something real quick. Yeah, real quick. Pear Bear Cleveland and Darian Rucker, please email us. Thank you. So Thanks. while we wait for the fifth person to put the word Mike in the chat, let's take a listen and get to know – Cleveland Browns defensive back rookie Cam Mitchell a little better. We have Greg Newsom, celebrity charity softball bound, joined by Browns rookie cornerback Cam Mitchell. You ready for 60 seconds, Cam? No football, 60 seconds off the cuff. You ready? If you weren't a football player, what sport would you play? Baseball. That was quick. You get, so you're going to win the home run derby today? Hey, I'm going to win it. I've been thinking about that for, you know, baseball is my first love. I'm going to say that. Favorite dessert? Brownies. Brownies over cookies. A good brownie beats a good cookie, yeah. That's a rookie answer. We are learning Cam Mitchell, still a rookie. If you could go anywhere on vacation, unlimited budget, where are you going? Greece. Three dinner guests that are alive. <laughs> oh, snap. That's a good one. Um, mm, <laughs> hey, we got to skip that. We skip one. Oh, we got time for one more question in 60 seconds with Cam Mitchell. <laughs> Coffee, iced or hot? Iced recently. Iced recently. That is Cleveland Browns Brook. <laughs> yeah. Cam Mitchell. Cam, thanks so much. Appreciate man. you, my man. All right, I got a few comments off of that. Mike is obsessed with coffee. He always asks that question. What's funny? Things. I hate coffee. Why do you ask about? Why do you ask that then? It tells you a lot about a person. It does, yeah. yeah. Does it really? Yeah, it I don't. Drink, well, I don't drink it. So I don't drink it. Either. It tells. So what that mean? I'm real. It tells me. Coffee dogs. tastes like piss. It's disgusting coffee. Like, yeah, like it's gross. That means that tells me you get your highs from something else. <laughs> yeah. Mikey, how would you know what piss tastes like? That's a That's good question. question. That's a good question. Number two, I thought <laughs> it, it was funny when he didn't want to answer that question. He kind of like elbowed you out. He's like, come on, get something else. You nip That's it. a good question. Why are you ripping him for saying brownies over cookies? Because cookies are the superior answer. No, uh, cookies are often disappointing. Depend, yeah, depending on where the cookie is. I mean, you could get a bad brownie though too. Yes, that's good, yeah. but you could get a great because brownie. Because brownies are a, so a dry brownie is yeah, worse than oh, a dry cookie. They put it, they put hash in it. Like, and to be truthful, <laughs> like you got to ask. Like everybody can't make brownies. As a matter of fact, everybody shouldn't be bringing desserts. I'd rather you bring <laughs> store bought than like have you. Don't be trying your hand at stuff. Like, yeah, I got these experimental brownies. No, we don't want your experimental brownies, <laughs> Susie. <laughs> No, if they, if they experiment on it, they put something in them. Like, yeah. Yeah, I, I never do this. I never bake anything. Well, why you start <laughs> well, why today? You, don't put, why no, you start yeah, today? Yeah, don't like, make, we not, we I, take this seriously. Now, nah, I'm not going to be a guinea pig. And, that's not going to happen. And I would tell my wife if those brownies were not good. These are not givable brownies. Yeah. Keep you those at home. Heard Cam said he would have been a baseball player. Yeah, How did he, he didn't hit, he didn't hit any home runs in the home run yeah. I like that he said baseball was He's his first. Stephen Kwan. He was a super good dude though. Earl was with us uh, out there. Cam was beyond friendly. He probably signed five hundred autographs. Um, he was awesome. Good for him. So good That's for Cam awesome. Mitchell. I see Mike Prayer in the queue. I'm going to get him set nice. up full. So you got to fill for a minute, <laughs> and then we will bring oh, on will we uh, Mike Prayer to preview the USL championship seconds. game this weekend. I I would like to. I can't wait to be in good enough shape, and I'm hoping maybe by next summer, certainly by two summers, I got a lot of work to do to be able to play softball. I want us to have a UCSS softball team. Can you play? 
Yeah, I can play. Tyvis, you're Don't in. ask me no no blasphemous question like that. Now, now I I'm, said are you in? Not no, no, oh, no, no, okay. No, I'm yeah. not. No, I can't slide. No, I'm not. You think I'm gonna slide? I, um, I am. Half my little league kids won't slide. I'm not gonna ask <laughs> you to slide. <laughs> um, yeah, but I'll be the DH. All right. You have a DH? Okay. We, I, mean, I don't know if we have enough people though. I, I wish we could say you seen my work, but McNuggets did such a terrible job of missing my highlight catch that you don't really get to display. Like, you like get the full like finding like my like like viewing another man's work <laughs> is kind of creepy though. Like, let me see what your work talking about. That's kind of. Mm. We got Mike. We see. Okay. We Mike got Mike Pereira. Pereira. What's up, Mike Pereira? The legendary Mike Pereira. There he is. There he is. Thank he you for joining us. What could be legendary about me? Nothing. Nobody nobody wants to even hear from me usually. I never yeah, I mean, have we ever heard of a referee being called legendary? I mean, referees get a lot of scorn. That's about it. You don't get a lot of love. Yeah. Did we lose him? Yeah. Love we may have Did lost we lose him. Mike. Nope, he's back. He's back. A little, okay. little lapsing connection. Oh. But there he is. He's back. There you go. Mike. So I, I'm curious, like, what, when you early, like, what made you decide to be a referee when it all started? What did you, was it something you wanted to be as a kid? Did you want to be a player? And then you said, I'm not good enough. I'm going to be a uh, rep. What happened? Hell no. I didn't <laughs> want to be a rep. Um, I, I didn't. I mean, my dad did some refereeing and um, I saw him, you're talking back in the 60s, get yelled at. And, yeah. um, so I had no desire. A guy came to me and said, do you want to officiate? And I said, no. And he goes, why? What do you mean? I said, I don't have any interest in officiating. And he said, it's only youth football. It's kids. And I said, I don't care who it is. I don't want to officiate. And then he then he threw the, the uh, he, he hooked me. He threw the money at it. He said, ah. you can make $10, $10 a game. Ooh. You can work three games on Sunday. You can make $30 cash. And um, I changed my mind yeah, over $30. It was, it was beer money. So I literally, honestly, I literally started for the money and um, for right. that, for that 30 bucks. And that was actually 1971. Wow. Hey, Mike, we're still getting paid you. that. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not getting a lot more than that either. For God's sake. <laughs> Hey, Mike, the, the USFL championship obviously is this week. We we here are selfishly rooting for Pittsburgh because Boogie Roberts, who plays on the Pittsburgh team, has been a regular member of our show because Canton's only an hour away from here. And so he comes on the show with us usually on Mondays or Tuesdays. He's become a friend of ours, so we're rooting for him to win. They've had a great run here at the end of the year to get themselves in this championship game. But obviously they're facing a tough test and a tough quarterback. Uh, what are you expecting? You expecting this to be a high-scoring game, low-scoring game, exciting? What, what are you expecting here? Well, I mean, I think what you saw with Alex Magoo last week with Birmingham, I mean, he's he's a special talent, which is really amazing because he started the year as a second stringer. I mean, he was not he was not playing, only came in after the injury to the starter. But he's special. He's special in this type of game. He's a quarterback that moves all around. And I think that's important in our league. Those that have had the best success, like Cookus and those guys can really move and really run and create, you know, problems for the defense. So I, I really do think that Birmingham is a more talented team offensively. But, you know, what Ray Horton has done with Pittsburgh has been amazing. And I don't think any other team in the league has got a group that is bought into what Ray is trying to do. His players are really <laughs> supportive of him and that defense. So I think they're going to present more problems to Magoo and the Stallions than others have pre uh, presented so far. And, you know, I mean, they started out horribly, and Ray Horton was calling me all the time yelling at me. Um, but now they they have got things turned around, and he's now a pretty good friend of mine. But I I, – I, I really respect the job that Ray has done. And, um, you know, I I think it's going to be a close game. And, um, you know, but again, I look at the offensive uh, firepower that Birmingham has, and you would have to look and think that um, they are the odds-on favorite. You know, Mike, you, you know, we, we talk about it all the time, Mike, you know, when you're coming from an angle or perspective of being a referee, 
and, and that background now an executive still still being an analyst with refereeing how do you how do you get a chance to enjoy the game it would seem like y- you you have a job to do and you would have to take like the names off the back of the jerseys and you just have to call balls and strikes has that ever been difficult for you to be able to be a big fan of the game and you kind of miss a little bit of it when you're still being a referee? I I am not. The thing that's even worse is I'm not really a fan of any game in any sport. I mean, if I go watch a baseball game, even though I was never an umpire, I'm, I'm looking at the umpires. I'm looking wow. at their mechanics. I'm judging their performance every sport that i go to it's basketball i mean when it gets to be like the final four i turn it on to see who's referee in the final four um <laughs> once you, once you get this into your blood yeah. i mean it consumes you and you know 1971 so i've been doing this now for 52 years either on the field or in the administrative side and now the broadcasting side and it's it's like that's all I think about. I mean, I love golf. I play a lot of golf. And when I watch the PGA tournaments, um, you know, the most excited I get is when they call in the rules guy. You know, I think that's like <laughs> the coolest thing in the world. And I was like kind of like the starter. I was the first one. And, uh, and now to see all of the other sports that have rules analysts, I think it's, it's really cool. But I... I really have a difficult time, and whether it's watching on TV or in person, getting into the game. I mean, I have a much easier time watching the officials and rooting. I actually root for them, which wow. is you know, unusual. But uh, you know, that's part of my that's my fraternity. Those are my pals, even though I don't even know them. I know the difficulties and what they go through, and um, so yeah, that's 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 the way sports has gotten for me. And just a quick uh, another thing. Um, I, I remember watching this a couple of years ago. There was a strike with the referees. Can you kind of talk about, you know, the plight of of the referees and and wages and because and to be truthful, they're a huge part of, of what the game is on the field. Um, have have wages gone up? Have uh, have they been able to, um, you know, have more benefits? And now, could you possibly be a full time referee? and earn enough living to take care of your family and don't have anything else? Well, I think you're practically full-time now, quite frankly, with what they make you do. I mean, it's just that you're living at home, but, you know, you have a blackout period that goes for a couple months where they leave you alone. But, you know, beyond that, they're sending you rules, tests, videos, and all those different things. But, you know, um, I... I think the gig is a good one when it comes to money. And I know the officials will always say that they're worth more. And I think they probably are. But, you know, if you look at it, you know, from the standpoint of the amount of money they make, you know, the veteran guy's going to be making about, you know, to the tune of maybe 300000 something like that, 325000 at the top end. And, the you know, the, the rookies certainly make a lot less. It's based on... Um, It's based on longevity. But the thing is, when we went through those strikes, I mean, it was pathetic. They weren't strikes. They were lockouts. Um, We basically, the league, locked them out. And um, and what we found out was they are good. And we had a hard time finding anybody that could even – you know, approach their level of officiating. I mean, when I went through the one in 2001, I'm telling you, I was bringing in – ex sec guys i would i was finding them in bars i mean they were like we're getting the the, the he should be back any second here i don't know sometimes that's the internet for you folks Mm. As soon as we get Mike back, I will bring him back in. I tell you what, Ben Tyvers, we need to. We could be the Super Mario Brothers. We need to be the (laughs) Mario Brothers of of getting this uh, referee in there. I'm not. I can't be a referee because I get. It's a tough gig. They get. They get shit on all the time. (laughs) Well, my problem is I get. Everybody ignores when they do the do a good job, which is the majority of the time. Yeah. But the mistakes are highlighted. It's like 
it, it, in a way, being a ref's like being an offensive lineman. You only notice them when they screw up. Right. That's true. <laughs> or but I'll be, I get caught watching the game. Like, yeah, yeah. That's my problem. Like, I'll be sitting there like, right. oh, I'm supposed to be looking at these uh, guys. Uh, I mean, that's got to be hard. I mean, like, <laughs> well, he said he don't pay attention to it. He pays attention yeah. to the referee. And, right, but he's been doing it forever. That's well, yeah, that's in the beginning, it's hard. NFL refs and baseball refs ain't supposed to be fraternizing. I'll be having a, I'll be like, I mean, you got dunked on, bro. You the, the, <laughs> hey, then on top home, of that, we got him back. I'll be we biased to DBs. I, I wouldn't call the pass interference ever. Yeah, it, it is tough. But I, we, I was just saying that I, we, we lost you for a second, but I was just saying that it feel like being a rep. You guys must relate to the offensive linemen because officials are really like offensive linemen. Nobody <laughs> notices you guys unless you screw up, right? Like it's the same thing with the hey. offensive linemen. A left tackle could could make the could win. 99% of his plays, but he gives up that sack, and that's the only thing we hear about. Same thing with you guys. You can get it right 99 out of 100 times, but you screw up that 100th call, we say you're an idiot. That's what the fa- that's how the fans react. Yeah, and I think what the is, fans expect perfection out of officials, and it's right. just not it's, not, it's not realistic. I mean, the game is so fast, and it's so difficult to officiate, and you're actually making some decisions in 1 26th of a second. I mean, that's how fast those things at the sideline are those catches at the sidelines and and you're right we're like the offensive lineman which i always related to the offensive lineman when i was a referee during commercial breaks i wasn't the same as some of the referees but i would go into the huddle and i would not only would i just kind of yuck it up with them a little bit but then you know those offensive you pass a little gas there and then everybody blames it on each other and not the referee the referee would never do that (laughs) Um, i I used to have a ball doing stuff like that. And, and, you know, relationship, for the most part, um, on the field with the players is good. I mean, it gets it gets strained. But, you know, we're – I mean, we're all in this together. I mean, we don't have favorites um, other than, you know, what fans on social media say that we're biased to this player or biased to this team. Um, we just want to get out of there with nobody talking about us. That's the key, as you said earlier. We don't get the recognition. Yeah. We don't want the recognition. We don't. We just don't want to be talked about in a negative way after the right. game has had an impact on the game. Mike, how many times have you actually waved off something? Like, have you actually admitted, like, oh, I got it wrong and waved the flag? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I did. I mean, the, you, you know, and I mean, it happens – a couple times during the game, you know, most of the time, because there's seven different people on the field and they all have different angles. Mm-hmm. So you may think that you see a block in the back, but then the guy who had a different angle comes to you and said, is that what you called? Did you call 32 for the block in the back? And you say, yes. He said, it was not in the back. It was from the side. I had the perfect look and you pick it up. And I think that's good. Mm-hmm. Now yeah. replays getting to the point and especially in the USFL where you know, and I'm the the replay official doing it out of Los Angeles, but we can also pick up personal fouls that are called. Like we had one against uh, that was against Michigan. We called the face mask penalty on a 55 yard touchdown pass, but it wasn't a face mask. So I was able to jump in and take that off and award the touchdown. And, um, you know, and that's kind of cool. I'm kind of on a power trip doing that. You know, it's back <laughs> in my day like I'm on the field again, but, um, you know, you, I would say like 95 out of a hundred times when you look at wave offs, that the, the, the wave off is the right thing to do ends up to being the correct thing. Mike, last thing we appreciate the time again, USFL championship game is a Saturday. Uh, when you look at that, you know, the, we as an audience are hearing the conversations that are being had, right? Uh, between the referee and the and the and the replay, that's something I think should come to the NFL. Being able to change personal fouls, face masks, stuff like that, I think that should come to the NFL. Will it? And is there anything else from the USFL that could work in the NFL? Well, um, will it? No, I don't think so. I mean, you know, I wish it would because I think it's healthy. I mean, not only do you see it when you're watching television, but it's also flashed up on the scoreboard when you're in the stadium. I mean, I'm the only referee that ever got in a call that I made in Birmingham that went against the Stallions. I think I'm the only referee that got booed from 2,000 miles away because I was <laughs> sitting in Los Angeles when I made the decision. I don't think they'll do it. I mean, they 
prefer not to talk about officiating words. We prefer transparency. Um, yeah. So I, I don't think it's going to happen. I do think they'll look at some things like they're so concerned about the kicking game, as you know, yeah. you know, the, the change this year about signaling for a fair catch on a kickoff, you can get the ball to 25. They're also concerned about punt returns and, um, and the number of injuries on punt returns. And, we went with the recommendation. They actually asked me, the competition committee said, how about moving the gunners in on punts, moving them inside the numbers and not letting him get double teamed at the line of scrimmage. And um, so we tried that. And this year on punt returns, both setups, setting up for the punt return and then on the return itself, we had zero concussions. And, um, you know, it may be the fact that the gunners aren't getting double teamed. It may be that they're not flying down the field as quickly. Um, so I, I think that's something that they will probably look at. I don't think they'll like our kickoffs because we encourage kickoffs. We had 90% of our kickoffs were returned. When they're projecting the NFL this year, 31% of them will be returned. Um, we like the returns. We haven't had an uptick in the number of normal number of injuries on kickoffs, even with 90% returns. So, we're happy about that, but I don't think that they will ever go the opposite direction from where they're going now, which is to have less, I should say, fewer, fewer and fewer kickoff returns. Mike, great stuff again. Everybody will be watching Saturday night, the championship game of the USFL, uh, Birmingham and Pittsburgh, of course. There you go. Thanks, Mike. We appreciate the time. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Yeah, guys. Take care. And we'll see you in overtime. Mike Carrera. We'll